Welcome to, whoa, that was weird, the Tuesday show. My name is James Chen, and we have here Mr. Ultra David and Mr. Tubaware. How's everybody going out there? Doing great. I just want to say that this hoodie is not only cool, but also extremely comfortable. The insides of it are so soft and <laughs> just really enjoyable to wear. So it's oh, like oh, 75 right, degrees today, but I have a hoodie on anyway. So it, it's, it's very kind of like hardcore looking but really a softy on the inside so Correct. It, 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 it represents li joe to a t it is the li hoodie yes indeed <laughs> how's it going over there tubo i'm doing all right i had a nap and then i ate some food and here i am that's that's been my last few hours well, who can complain about that? That doesn't sound so bad. <laughs> Sleep so, <and> food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are two important things. Uh, we're going to be talking about these topics on this side. Left. Nailed it. Nailed it. Yeah, that's right. And look, not a lot of like news news happened over this past week, but we're going to talk about the stuff that did. King of Fighters 15 kind of announced that there's rollback. We'll talk about that. Uh, there's a super cool new training mode feature in Plus R that we'll get to. We have an interview with Ebonic Plague, who's here to talk about stuff, including make an announcement. We're going to talk about this unbanned Nairo hashtag that's been going around. In fact, it was number one trending on Twitter. We'll talk all about that um, and our, our thoughts on related topics. Then we're going to get through some 5-5 five -five matchup questions, because last week, if you recall... We had a super busy show, and we actually didn't do 5-5 five -five matchup at all. We were just putting that off until this next week. So, combined with the fact that not a ton happened this past weekend, we're going to be focusing on that today. There's actually a bunch of cool questions, so that's I'm looking forward to that. There's a few other things to get to in terms of game and community news and tournament results, and then we'll get to our mailbag as we do. So, let's start by talking about the King of Fighters number 15. Very. It had been a big point of contention in the SNK player scene. Is KOF 15 going to launch again with substandard netcode in the same way that, well, basically all of their games have, uh, especially in an era where they're kind of a load at this point. If you think about it, every major fighting game dev and every indie fighting game dev, basically except for Nintendo, is putting out games, or has announced at least games, that will have good rollback netcode, right? Or maybe they've tried at least. Maybe we could say that for a couple of them. Um, but they're they're certainly working on that. SNK, it was unclear. They hadn't said anything about it at the fighting game developers roundtable. They kind of danced around it. It was unclear, you know. Many people took that to mean they're not going to have it. So there's been this big push among community members to get SNK to to reckon with it, to talk about it. And uh, SNK, hashtag, hashtag SNK rollback, among other things, has been uh, going around, related hashtags as well. And finally, Oda, the producer, said in a tweet, great to see lots of passionate SNK rollback fans. You will be happy to hear that we have been working hard on an internal rollback solution for King of Fighters 15 from early in the dev cycle. There is still a lot of work remaining, so we can't make any promises yet, but please be patient! Exclamation point. And that's basically all we have on this. We don't have anything else. There hasn't been anything official as far as I've seen. There haven't been any clarifications of this. This is what we got. What well? do you guys think? <laughs> well? Uh, so the way the tweet was worded makes me feel like they haven't actually been working on rollback <laughs> since early in the development. Okay. Uh, it's, it's worded and it sounds to me like 
a response to people yelling at them about rollback, and they didn't really know what to say. So it was, you know, it was either, hey, shut up, nerds, we're working on it, or it was either we not, we're not going to do it. They chose to tell everybody to shut up, we're working on it. Like, stop, you know, tweeting at us to give us rollback and all that. They were, they were tired of seeing it. Like, I feel like that's pretty clear. But also it reads like somebody that didn't understand how important good netcode was <laughs> until people started yelling at him about it. So I'm, I'm still very skeptical on how this turns out. Yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, it's it's a very weird kind of thing to do because if you were working on rollback, if you were planning to do rollback since the beginning, why would you announce it in a tweet like this as opposed to, yeah, da, 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 boom? I mean, I joked with uh, uh, Olaf that they should have just had an announcement video, like if the feature, you know how in the game you can roll if you can actually roll backwards. It should have just been a video of characters rolling backwards, and then it should have just ended, and that would have been it. And I think that would have been the most amazing announcement video ever. You know, like rollback kind of thing. But, you know, regardless, look, we got Oda to, to say the word. <laughs> we got him to say the word. We got him to talk about it. And he says, we've been working on it. Yeah, there's a little bit of it that sounds kind of sketchy or whatever. Doesn't matter to me. If they're looking at it, if it causes the game to get pushed back, we're all better off for it. Because the game has to have it after Strive, after what everybody has seen, what is capable of good rollback. Now, obviously, there's concerns that it's an internally developed thing. They've got freaking uh, Code Mystics sitting here off to the side that could help them and everything. But still, they said it. They're talking about it. It's better than what we had before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I think I agree with you guys that it seems like it's a little bit... It, it It is an unusual way to release something that is this important. Especially for a game that's putting out new trailers like every single week. Right? Yeah, yeah. Every single week they have something about a new character that's coming out. I think they had two in one week, last week or the week before. It, so it's not, it's not as if there's not frequent communication. Uh, they just had the developers roundtable like a week and a half ago mm -hmm. like if there had been rollback to talk about at that time especially because they were talking about rollback <laughs> like the larger group was yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. rollback they you know oda was asked to talk well kind of sort of was uh, was asked to talk about netcode wouldn't that have been the time or wouldn't one of these trailers have been the time if they had had it so I think I'm inclined to agree that it seems unlikely to me that they have actually been doing it from early in the dev cycle, unless they're still early in the dev cycle. <laughs> it's like the only way that I can imagine well, I mean, this being correct. Like, it's actually still in his mind early in the dev cycle, right? Even though it's supposed to come out in 2021. So. I mean, I feel like that, that to me is the only way that this really makes any sense. The other way to look at it as well is that they're still working on it and they still haven't gotten it to work properly because they don't want to release bad, you know, rollback netcode a la Street sure. Fighter V kind of thing. And so they just didn't want to commit to it. But now the pressure kind of came up and they have to say something. And so they're like, all right, let's just say that we're working on it. Obviously, the tweet is still very we can't commit to anything yet. We're trying our best yeah. here. So maybe they're having trouble difficult, having some difficulty with it because they are doing it internally. And, you know, while it would be nice to hire external sources and everything like that, budget. <laughs> Welcome to the corporate world of game development, you know, kind of thing. So. I'm not upset about it being an internal thing. M many of the best have been internal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Killer Instinct, NRS... Guilty, Guilty Gear, like, yeah, these have done it internally. So it, Tekken's now is great, right? They did it internally. So I, that doesn't bother me. I'm I'm okay with that. I just think that it's the timing of it seems like, you know, I agree with Shay in the chat that it seems like they just didn't want to talk about it at this time. Mm -hmm. Now, w whether that's because it didn't exist until last week when they were finally like, okay, we need to do this, <laughs> or else even our most dedicated players are not going to buy our video game. Or if it's because they just didn't think that it was like ready to be discussed or it wasn't, you know, they didn't think that it was something to bring up early in the, these trailers because they, after all, have only had, what, four or five trailers so far, something like that. Um, 
I, I don't know. I don't know which one of those it is, but I agree that it seems like they didn't want to talk about it, but were kind of forced to by the community. You know, In any case, though, right? There's criticisms about like whether it was real before or not. This is super cool. I'm really happy for KOF 15 players. Uh, they have been super happy on Twitter. I think makes total sense. I'm, I'm, I think that's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've seen some people happy, but some also cautiously optimistic. <laughs> yeah, a lot of a lot of response, kind of like what we're giving to was the really rollback from the get go. You know, it just. I, I think SNK has a lot of distrust in their fan base now after Sam mm. show. Yeah. Like, it's definitely not just me and James. I see yeah. pretty much the entire SNK community or Sam show community upset on Twitter and such and, you know, Reddit and blah, blah, blah over the lack of communication and, you know, not fixing their game, essentially. <laughs> so I think that SNK has to be more responsive and also like knock it out of the park coming up here soon yeah. otherwise netcode i mean the netcode if even if it's good it's not going to save them if all their good faith is gone by the time the game comes out right yeah well i i do think that if the netcode the netcode doesn't need to be guilty or strive level netcode in my view like it would be great if it was but their netcode has been really bad. Like yeah, it's, it's among the player. worst for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, like even even back when everybody's was bad, when I tried to play KOF thirteen online, it was bad. We all knew yeah. it was bad the whole time. Mm -hmm. So if it's if it is even Street Fighter Five level where it's like rollback, but they kind of screwed it up, even that is like a big step up. I feel <laughs> um, so that's and and there's going to be a lot of people who want to buy it and play it. Like KOF has a gigantic fan base all over the world uh, so yeah. sounds if, like you two are saying the same thing people's trust in snk isn't very high right now yeah. <laughs> there's no trust there isn't any trust in the net code like everybody has always thought it's terrible it's not like that right. let anybody down <laughs> you know what I mean? like we've always known that well yeah i mean i guess that's what i was trying to say though is that they need to go harder on their communication they need to yeah. make these trailers tell people stuff about their game and features and they're not doing any of that yet. And I get they're just announcing the characters and it's probably going to yeah. launch with like 25 plus characters. So we're going to get a ton of these trailers. Like, I understand that. Um, but man, it's been over a month since you gave us that big trailer with the story mode stuff and mm. talked about rollback in your old games, but didn't mention it for this game. So <laughs> right. yeah, it just, they're, they're yeah. not, they're not communicating very well. And that, yeah. and that I, sucks for the players. To be honest with you, if they released with like 24 characters, I'd be surprised it would be that low because that's eight teams. And I feel like they're probably going to have to try to, you know, go for like 12 teams or something like that. Mm. But I mean, I think that's kind of why they're doing what they're doing. And, and to be fair, I mean, SNK is still, I mean, for all intents and purposes, obviously they were a big deal in the past, but now, you know, SNK is not really the company out there that has money to throw around and do all this kind of stuff. And so mm. it's probably just a small team here going like, what should we release? How do we do this information? And it's like probably pretty daunting at this point. And, uh, you know, I, as a like it was like this reminds me of like when Tekken 7 kind of came back in and became a dominant force again KOF to me has always been one of the franchises of fighting games you know and oh, so yeah. I really hope that yeah to to Tubo's point to Tubo's point I'm sorry uh that they knock this out of the park and really really shatter our expectations because I want King of Fighters to be back in the limelight because it feels right. You know what I mean? <laughs> it just, it feels like that's how it's supposed to be. And so uh, I, I'm rooting for them. Uh, and, you know, like I said, for me to have them even mention it at all, I think is a win to even acknowledge that they're working on it. I mean, e even when even when the Dragon Ball producer was like, yeah, we know about rollback. We just can't implement it right now. I thought it was a win because she talked about yep. it. L l like the fact that Oda is even saying that they're working on it, I think is is an even bigger win. So I'm going to be optimistic about it. I'm going to be hopeful for it. Yeah, the tweet is weird. Why did they choose to go the way they did was weird, but they talked about it. They're working on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think that's all totally right. I'm, I'm happy for the scene. I think that's super important. 
And if nothing else, even if they put this game out and the net code's like better, but it's not fantastic, it at least, even for the further future, signifies that it's something that they're taking seriously. And and if SNK puts out, if they begin also doing rollback, it really is at that point only Nintendo who's not taking net code seriously. <laughs> no, like, we want to talk not, about not every game has it like. <laughs> Oh, what was that? I was about to say, if you want to talk about a company that we have no faith in being able to do that. <laughs> no chance. No chance. No chance. No chance. It's not It's yeah. not that every game will have it because, like, they're probably not going to go back and do it for Caliber, for Sam Show, for, you know, that's for Grand Blue. Like, existing games are probably not going to get this treatment. But moving forward at this point, yeah, every major and indie fighting game dev, except for Smash, is has a game out that has rollback or has announced a game that has rollback or has been harried enough into tweeting that they're going to finally put rollback in. You know, yeah, one yeah, of those yeah. things, which is great. Cool. Yeah, well, I've always heard good things about the netcode in ARMS. I haven't played it myself, but I also played a bunch of Splatoon and I thought it was good in that game. So it doesn't seem like it's... like Just because a game is put out by Nintendo doesn't mean it's going to have bad netcode. But they're also not going to take the time to redo Smash and its well, netcode. I mean, the thing about it is, is that we always have to remember that fighting games do require 1 60th perfect timing based on visuals and audio cues and 16 frame reactions, which is easy. But, um, you know, like, <laughs> um, but the thing is, like a lot of these other games, you know, Splatoon, if you shoot a place on the ground and then there's delay or whatever. Like, it's just, it's not going to yeah, have that same kind of effect, you. you know? Yeah. I, I always did have a good time in Splatoon Netcode, though. Oh, yeah, I never had yeah. a problem with it, personally. I've definitely yeah. seen, Nintendo. I've definitely seen delay base in Splatoon Netcode where, like, you okay. shoot somebody and then they just disappear because they actually died a few seconds ago and stuff like that, you know? Okay. It's definitely happened before, but like I said, the experience isn't as, like jarring as it is for fighting games so flow sauce says i feel like we're bullies yeah that's right bully him into putting out a video game that you can play online yes yeah, absolutely capitalism works I mean, <laughs> yeah i know yeah if 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 we're bullies for convincing a company to release a product that will sell more and potentially last more so that they can have multiple seasons of DLC and earn more money by higher game sales. Bully away. <laughs> bully. <laughs> Absolutely. A big old bully. Yeah. All right. Anything else to say on this one? No. Nope. Wow. Cool. Perfect well, timing. Good work, everybody. Nice, nice job. Okay. Pretty nifty. So let's talk about this next one, which is a very interesting thing that dropped today. Uh, the Guilty Gear XX Accent Core Plus R, which I always have to look up to the side as I recite the entire name for, um, <laughs> has a super interesting new training mode feature. Super cool. So essentially, it is taking control of a replay. So you play a match, it saves a ton of different replay files for you. I was watching on Sage Am's stream earlier, and he was scrolling down through this huge list of replay files that, that he hadn't even known it was there. Um, and it makes it so that you can go into the replay, and at any point, you can pause it, and you can go to the little menu and say, take control. And when you do that, it then lets you insert yourself into the game as your character in that exact situation. Yeah, so cool. And you can test out whatever you want to test out. What was actually the most optimal combo here? Or how should I have countered the opponent's move? Or maybe I should practice a safe jump on this wake up DP that they ended up doing. Which way am I supposed to block this? <laughs> exactly, exactly. How am I supposed to block? Like, what's my option here? Am I supposed to IB or, or whatever, right? All the sorts of stuff that you can test. What happens if you let it run too long is that it just keeps on playing the opponent's inputs. And at that point, there's a big desync effectively, right? So it turns into nonsense. Right. But for the, first, for the first little bit, you can definitely be like, all right, Potemkin's doing down D in the air on me. Like, what am I going to be doing? Like, what do I do about this? What's my anti -air? Which I watched Sage Jam try to figure out until he did. He figured out, like, what the proper anti is, is in this situation. Is it easy to just reset? Like, you know, if, I, if I'm at this timestamp and then I run over the, you know, the procedure and then I'm past that part, can you just reset right back to where you were? Is that You is sure that can. Easy? It's super easy. Hey, it looked like he was just cool. pressing a single button and he was back to the start of it. That's really cool. Dude, it was so sick <laughs> just watching him. And you, you could tell how excited he was for it. 
Uh, but yeah, the idea is a great one. It's not the first time I've ever heard of it in a game. For example, I know that StarCraft has this. You can have a replay of StarCraft and load it in and then be like, okay, well, they attacked me here. Like, what could I have done differently? Um, but as far as fighting games go, it's the first time that I'm aware of this having been in a fighting game. And it's super cool. Yeah, And it's something that we've been asking for. <laughs> People who have developed uh, features in with rollback because of the nature of saved state, mm -hmm. uh, they knew it was going to be a lot easier to implement. The interesting thing about this conversation, though, is like this feature super cool and everything. There was a I wish I actually had saved it here, but there was a great conversation between Keats and Oric about this mm. feature. Keats was just like, this is the greatest feature ever. But how do you market this to the top level people to put the money in to develop this feature? Because whatever feature you develop means you're not developing another feature. Whereas maybe 0.01% of the people will actually use this feature. How do you convince people to do this, right? One of the nice yeah. things about Code Mystics is it feels like they are, I mean, the, the, the people who made the thing for, for Accent Core were literally the fans, right? Like the community, right. right? So they're willing just to go and just do this because they want it. So, you know, the conversation between Oric and Keats was really interesting because Oric was like, marketed as like, hey, Capcom can put out this place and see like, Tokido's about to do this. Can you survive, you know? And like save a replay kind of a situation. But even then, that still only touches like maybe 0.01% of people who would actually, you know, take that kind of feature. So it, it's an interesting situation. Oric is in the chat right now, literally saying, I could sell it. So like, you know, <laughs> hopefully we could, but you know, that's the hardest part. It's a feature that we all want, we all like, we all feel like we need. How do you convince people to, how do you convince the developers and the higher ups to work on it? It's That's the same question as everything, like making better one player content, making a better ranking system, making more robust trading hmm. modes. It's all the same question is how do you convince someone to do that? Yeah, for them, I guess they're just able to easily do it because it's just a kind of group of people working on it. <laughs> yeah, fans, I mean, well, what I understand is didn't Arc System Works hire those people? Yeah, they like, did. Wasn't that, yeah, so they probably have this team of like four guys just doing this stuff kind of for fun, <laughs> basically, like in the corner while, you know, Arxis is finishing up uh, Strive. <laughs> they have these guys working on these old plus R features, but it's definitely stuff that they could use in the future too, though. It's not like they're just, you know, doing busy work. Like, they're obviously doing stuff that's really, really cool. So yeah. I hope that Arxis is, like, using these guys to give them ideas for stuff or, like, strive in the future. Mm -hmm. That would be really dope. Or even the Dungeon Fighter Online game. Oh, that's right. That's, that's true. true, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Arxis... Yeah, it would, it would be very... Oh, well, go no, go it. ahead, go ahead. I just was going to say it's what it would be cool, but in that thread, and I, maybe it was elsewhere I saw Keith saying that although he thinks it's super cool, it would be possible, but harder to do for a game, like a modern game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sure. It's easier to do for an older game like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it seems like, I mean, if Strive comes out and is like wildly successful because of the rollback netcode, despite the lobby, <laughs> um, you know, uh, there's a lot of information to glean from that, right? If you're Arxis, you're like, well, shit, maybe we should listen to these people about these things more often, you know? And, right. and hopefully Arxis can be a pioneer on the Japanese dev side because uh, Hanzo Gonzo was in the chat basically just kind of echoing the, the sentiment that especially the Japanese game dev executives, it's going to be harder to convince them to do stuff like this. But if Guilty Gear Strive comes out and just like in the Western scene blows everything out of the water in terms of sales because we're all playing. And then all of a sudden we have international tournaments where like, yeah. you know, like we just ran a street fighter five tournament for the match arena cup thing. And it was limited to East coast, you know? And it's like, 
Man, we can't even run a California to Connecticut, you know, tournament here, you know. But if Strive can run tournaments where Europeans can play against Japanese players, against American players, and then Strive explodes, you know, hopefully that will maybe start to get the Japanese devs to look at it differently. I'm not hopeful for it, but at least it would be there. Well, even, like... From what I've read and heard about the past two roundtables, obviously I don't speak Japanese, but um, it sounds like they already are talking about it. Like all the devs already know and they, they know it's a priority. I don't think any of those devs expected Arxis to blow everyone out of the water with the greatest netcode of all time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I think they're like, yeah, yeah, sure. We'll, we'll do rollback. And then Arxis makes the greatest thing ever. And now yeah. that's the bar that's set for everyone else. So they're probably not happy about that. But... Every, I think all the Japanese devs definitely know. Like, I don't think it's a secret. I don't think it's been a secret for years. I, I just think that right. maybe in the year 2020, when everybody was stuck at home, everybody got to yelling at them. And now they're like, oh, we know about it. But also now we know it's important. So right. hopefully, yeah, moving forward that we see all fighting games playable almost globally. That would be incredible. It's wild, dude. I was looking up the history of ggpo for an article that i wrote that was in 2006 that tony cannon made <laughs> 2006 is when that first came out i mean that is so long ago in video games that's like half of the existence of the fgc's time ago I, honestly I, it actually I, literally is I, it's actually exactly that amount that's absurd <laughs> i was actually one of the first beta testers for it i remember when tony first started developing and he was like here guys try playing this online and i was like what is this i don't get it like new kind of net code and i was like what and i tried it it was alpha 2 i believe it was and i mm -hmm. you know i didn't like alpha 2 so i was just like whatever <laughs> uh, blah 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 but like i was like yeah this feels not bad and then it's crazy to think that, God, how old was I at that time, right? I mean, like, I was 20 years, years old, ago. man. I was, like, 20 years old or something like that. And it's, oh, man, it's wild, dude. Maybe 30 years, 15 years ago? 15, yeah, I was going to say, if you, were, if you were 20, 15 years ago, James, there is a yeah, whole... Yeah, I was 30, 30, weird, 30, years, old, time 30 years old. So there Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to say that it's been a long time, and finally we've gotten to this point where game devs that we were talking about in the last segment are actually doing this. So for other okay. features like this, I feel like all we gotta wait for is just a nice time limit of about 15 years as they see new features and then decide <laughs> to adopt them. You know, just a 15 year development cycle, no big deal. No big deal, MBD. Yeah. No big deal. The, the, the thing about it is it's all gonna come down to how do you convince people to use training mode? Because as much as players like us spend all of our time in training mode, probably 98% of the people that are playing online don't really use training mode all that much. You know, so it's just like, we really have to, like there needs to be more in terms of just, training mode should be the hub for online. You know, instead of having it be a feature that you can wait in training mode to do stuff, like training mode should just be where you do matchmaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah a lot of these things took a long time if you think about how long it took to just get like functional easy button config that was probably 10 years a lot of games still don't have that maybe it's 15 years yeah that's true it doesn't even it's not even everywhere yet yeah <laughs> yeah not I mean, everything happens as fast as we want that's for sure i mean that's yeah. what the the Watch. like tom and tony and wizard used to say about evo it's like every time they came up with an idea it would take like four years before it showed up you know <laughs> it's like that's the way it works man <laughs> it's the way it works <sighs> all right well anything else to say about this uh no nope. nope. let's bring on our boy Let's bring on the boy. All right. So we are going to try to bring him on here. We're not going to take quite a break yet. So let's get uh, Mr. Isaiah into the chat over here. If we can, if he's listening, hey, jump into the call, buddy. Jump into the call. Oh, okay. Can we hear him? Hello. Yep, I can hear him. Also, his Discord profile is uh, Winnie the, like a very angry looking Winnie the Pooh, which is pretty rad. Is that from the baseball game? <laughs> no, no, it's uh, it predates that actually. Oh dang! Okay, okay. Here, let's switch. Well, on. I like it. Oh no! Yeah, I there's actually a there's a. Game? 
there's there's a honeybee on his uh on his nose and he's staring at it very intently <laughs> oh yeah i see i had to lean in real close for that yeah well i mean like if you look at the picture by itself uh you can you can tell a lot better than if it's like, like really small <laughs> all right well this is what we brought you on to talk about i'd like to know all about your <laughs> yeah profile tell us about your avatar and, yeah what do you got going on in this avatar well, I mean, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> uh, I could also just talk about, uh, uh, you know, that obviously my big announcement is that I'm uh, starting a cooking show, and it's going to be sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Uh, <laughs> I'm in. I'm super in. Wait, is this a real thing? No, it's a fucking real dude. <laughs> <laughs> I w we've been talking about, people have been talking about cooking shows. Remember last, like two weeks ago, we had, no, it was last week. We had the fight on which one of us was the best cook, you know, the yeah. three of the Ultra yeah. Chen guys. So, yeah. you know, I, I I'm curious who, who who have you guys have you guys done the show yet? I'm I'm waiting. I want to know. Well, basically, <laughs> we all think that we're good at cooking if we can follow a recipe. Yeah, mm. except and me. Not, if not, except me because I don't cook with recipes because that's how skilled I am. So you know, <laughs> I just make things. All right. I all got right. 30 minutes, so I'm not going to hold y'all. Uh, yeah, hey, look, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. It says below your name that you're going to be talking about GPVS and an announcement. So why don't we begin by flipping those two? Yeah, I think it's better if we flip the two, actually. Okay, okay, no problem, no problem. What's the, what what uh, do you got as an announcement here? Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, it's not Raid Shadow Legends cooking show. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm already All right, kick them yeah. off. We're done. We don't yeah. need this anymore. But, uh, so. so real talk. So just to give like a little preface, uh, obviously, we're in a quarantine. Everybody knows that. Otherwise, we wouldn't be sitting in front of green screens talking about whatever right now, Ooh. Ultra Chen Show. David would be over at James's house, all that stuff. Uh, and this quarantine has kind of ruined some games start in the FGC. Grand Blue has been one of them. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people just kind of looked away from Grand Blue after they started that whole thing, yeah. right? Uh, and so, last time I was on here, I talked about how strong of a scene Grand Blue is, and all the cool stuff going on, and things like that. And I wanted to lend my clout, if you will, <laughs> to Grand Blue Versus uh, as much as I possibly could, honestly. Uh, so, do do you have the do you have the graphic I got you, Jane? I do actually. I can throw those up right now. I should have gotten them prepared earlier, but here's the first one. Here is this the one that you want first? Here, Grand Ski Rumble. Here. Yeah, yeah. So this is the Grand Sk Sky Rumble. Oh, is, sorry. Uh, what I am announcing. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you fair no to worry. James? Uh, I thought it was Grand. Th th thank you, thank you, James. Uh, Grand Sky Rumble. I promise you, it is supposed to look like that because. <laughs> Grand Sky Rumble is actually modeled off of an in-game event that happens in actual regular mobile Grand Blue Fantasy. So that that is why it is spelled like that. I'm just going off of how the event worked. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, this is a 16-player Parsec Invitational tournament. You guys remember I talked about Parsec oh, yeah, uh, possibilities the last time I was on here, and we have our roster. We have who's streaming it. We have all that stuff. Um, figured out. And so you'll notice by the names for anybody who jumped into, uh, the, who, who have jumped into Grand Blue before, you'll notice a lot of these names are everyone in every portion of America, whether it be Canada, Mexico, or just regular, uh, like our USA, right? Uh, so we, we have, we have representatives from East, West Coast, uh, Canada, and also from Mexico. Uh, you'll nice. notice like Blasting Thunder's packs, Blasting Thunder's romantic style. Those are the you know Mexico representatives, etc. Uh, so, unfortunately, I'm just gonna say right now is some of the people that I did ask um, couldn't uh, couldn't show up to it. Uh, you know, there's time constraints or whatever. So there there was some people that you might just kind of sit down and look look at and think, ah, oh, you know. Where, where's this person or whatever? But it happens. It's a tournament. Yeah. I can't do anything about it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, cool. But yeah, these are basically the best uh, players to represent each region uh, without question. Come on. You have to Yo. force these players into your exhibition, man. If they say no, you have to like go to their home and no, I'm kidding. Anyways. Yeah. <laughs> After five, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> yeah yeah that's that I, you know what okay next time i do it i will do that thank you for the input <laughs> but yeah so real talk the the whole theme of this uh is about the community uh, itself right 
So uh, specifically, I wanted to talk about um, the community itself. And the person who made this graphic is Shay Benji on Twitter, at Shay Benji. Uh, they are an EU Grand Blue versus TL who Ooh. has done many different things, right? Uh, so, you know, that's already one of the, like the community spotlight things. I could have gone with a different graphic designer, but I decided to specifically go with one that is Grand Blue versus based. Uh, our commentators, actually, it, um, all Grand Blue versus commentators. Uh, you know, obviously some of them dabble in other games, but uh, you're going to have the likes of Swell GG's, Dynamite, Zero Syndicate, and Saint Cola commentating the event. That's awesome. That's a great list. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I really tried to pull out all the stops. And, you know, again, I, I'm mentioning the whole community thing and uh, pulling out all the stops. I got Ronin Rumble to help produce the event. Ronin Rumble has been running a lot of the Grand Blue versus stuff going on as of recent. And so uh, I thought they were just a prime pick for this whole thing. Okay. Yeah, that's, now, awesome. yeah, that's it's super cool, dude. Actually, oh, okay, no, no, I just noticed now. I almost thought for ex for a second there that this was all unique characters, but there's a couple of duplicate characters. Okay, okay. I so see. so I actually tried to get all unique characters, and oh. the original <laughs> list that I narrowed down to 16 players was almost all repeat uh, uh, unique characters. Oh, almost. dang, okay. Uh, but because of those people who could not attend due to date changes and whatnot... I could not make it happen. <laughs> that would have been sick. so. I'm only, sorry about that. I only see three repeat characters in here. I think so. Uh, yeah, I mean it's still super cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I tried my best, but you know it's yeah, gonna happen in, yeah, in, yeah, in pretty yeah. much any event uh, for any game. You know, you, you do what you can. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is my big thing, guys. It's gonna be happening on March 14th. Uh, it's gonna be 1 p.m. Uh, and basically, my whole thing is, is the Grand Blue community has been super cool throughout the entire time that it has has come out. It's just really unfortunate the quarantine has happened. Netplay is not great. There's no reason for me to sugarcoat it. It is not great. Um, it's not even good. <laughs> it's playable. <laughs> but uh, So I, I just wanted to put together as much of the, of the community itself into one avenue so that people who don't even watch Grand Blue can, you know, kind of sit down and see what's going on. What's all about? What's the meta right now? You know, how, who are the strong players? Who are the commentators? I wanted to sit down and take a look at all that. I saw one person in the chat mention uh, Noah Bonnick played commentary. Mm. So uh, I I was, uh, I'm a backup. I'm just a backup, okay? Mm -hmm. I, my whole portion of this, again, is specifically to the community. And while I am part of the community, I would like to give everybody a chance uh, that I can who... I, I, I get gigs all the time, dude. Like, it's... Yeah. <laughs> like, Dang! No, I you'll see me who I am. Right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, though. <laughs> So, yeah. so there's no reason for me to take that gig from somebody else in my head, right? It may you guys may not like think about it like that, but uh, <laughs> so I may as well give them as as much of an avenue to to be seen, as much of a spotlight to be seen as possible. So uh, I'm gonna back up for this tournament's commentary. I, you guys are probably not gonna hear me. Uh, I'm basically doing all the behind the scenes right. stuff with Ronan Rumble. Oh, I I feel like an ass. I totally forgot. Uh, one other thing is these Parsec servers. Uh, they are run by someone within the community who is uh, very well known and maybe kind of almost par pioneered the whole thing. Uh, Tong is helping me out with all the Parsec servers and ensuring that we have everything going on. Tong from the Marvel crew, obviously, uh, one of the people working on it, CEO and things. Uh, so they're, I believe they're actually testing the servers like literally as I announce this. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, it's... That is the one aspect of maybe not the Grand Blue versus community, but Tong is somebody who cares about the greater FGC as a whole. So, you know, kind of the perfect candidate for this whole thing is, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Uh, but mean, yeah, there's so... No, there's no one who's going to be better at... Stack players. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, there's no one who's going to be better at this than Tong, dude. <laughs> there, there are like three people I trust with Parsec server stuff. Right. It is Tong, uh, it's Angela Pickles... Uh, and it's uh, the Deus guys for Soul Calibur. I think those, those are like the three people I trust with running Parsec things perfectly. No, <laughs> I'm sorry, no love, I'm no sorry. love for your Soul Calibur boy over here. Yeah, no, you, know, that you didn't also mention Jason Game Dev. Yeah, and he also that's fair. That's that's totally fair. Uh, that's my bad. You're right. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, that sounds really was, cool, dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's basically some of the strongest players that the game has as of right now. Some of the content creators as well, uh, and things like that, along with you know the big name uh, streamer, the big name uh, commentators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. 
Is it going to so, be just like a, a double a limb bracket kind of situation? It's a regular old double limb bracket. Yeah, it's. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess. I guess you could like attribute it to like the tri- tri- Trivals event for Marvel, cool. if if you want to think mm-hmm. about it like that. Uh, I'm I not think... gonna say that like you know we're as prestigious or anything as that, but <laughs> whatever, man. It's cool. I, I do, I do have a second graphic for you. Was is that something that I, you want me to put up? Right yes. Now? So okay. specifically because I'm also here to talk about Grand Blue versus. Um, oh, okay. And show the love for Grand Blue versus as a whole. Um, I want to talk about the Grand Line Singularity. The Grand Line Singularity is another set of events all mashed together in one singular series of a league. Run oh, by wow. Ahe at PC, whom I believe is actually in the chat right now. <laughs> uh, so it's it's a cross tournament league. Uh, it's created to shine spotlight on Grand Blue versus as well. It's been running from January first. It's going to go to March thirty first all the way. There's a last chance qualifier. Uh, or excuse me, it's not. It doesn't end on March thirty first, but uh, the last chance qualifier takes place right after, and then the the end of it is on uh, April fourth. So um, right now. Uh, it's point based and things like that, but you guys will notice that the the graphics there are the different types of events that are part of the Grand Line Singularity. Uh, the Gates, Casa Fridays, the Octagon, Ronin Rumble, One Hundred Cl- Cloudscapes, right? So all those different uh, places or, or tournaments, excuse me, are are what's going on right now uh, for the Grand Line Singularity. Because if you haven't been paying attention to Grand Blue Versus uh, and its online events, there's basically three online events for Grand Blue Versus. Almost every single day of the week, <laughs> it's uh, it, it's heavily populated, and I know for for all the shortcomings of the game's netcode, uh, this game is played and loved every single day. Uh, and so I just wanted to show a little bit of love to those people. Obviously, not everybody is on this list because this was just specifically supposed to be like the East Coast um, Grand Line Singularity specifically. Mm-hmm. Uh, my event will be obviously everybody like we talked about, but yeah, there's there's numerous stuff going on. We have Wednesday night fights. We have NLBC. You know, we we don't just have these right here. Uh, th- those events go on still weekly and get a large player base, right? Uh, so I really did just want to like kind of show off things if people were were a little bit interested in Grand Blue versus, but they weren't sure where to start, uh, where where to go for tournaments and things like that. You can always hit us up on Twitter. Uh, and you can get started. It's it's really easy. A lot of the Grand Blue people are very nice, and they will talk to you about that whole thing. So I, I definitely implore you to try out the game right now, for sure. Yeah. Cool. That's I mean, so cool, man. Yeah, I, I really appreciate you talking about that and bringing this up. It, we, in the context, the video game itself, obviously, I think everybody recognizes is really good. But when we talk about this game in the context of the netcode, it's mostly the drag on it. So I think it's really cool that you're all, you instead really want to highlight the fact that people are playing this game, that there is a good player base for it, that the community is doing really well, and that there's a bunch of stuff going on. Yeah, I, I, I have, uh, I have clout, so I feel like I should probably use it for good, <laughs> right? <That's> like, <laughs> very cool. Now, every day I wake up and choose to use my clout for violence. <laughs> uh, uh-huh. Well, let me. I, this is this is the tubeware is the is the yang to my yin, I guess. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this though. I mean, on yeah. the title screen, you know, I had uh, Yul and and Honore on there. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. the two most recent characters. There was just a patch, right? That was dropped yeah, very there recently, was. right? How mm-hmm. has all this been turning out right now? I mean, last time we talked to you, I don't think they were out yet. So, how have they fit into the thing? How is the the meta of the game? You know, a lot of people probably see it as like, oh, it's a simple fighting game, but obviously, it's not. Like, how has the game been developing, and how has the mo- how has been the most recent patch been received? Yeah, um, so the most, the very most recent patch that literally just happened, like a very, like a small amount of time ago, uh, was on paper, it looked like there was a lot of changes, but it wasn't actually super big. It was basically, uh, legitimate balancing. They, they kind of like, they toned down some of the better characters by just a little bit, and then some of the weaker characters got just a little bit as well, right? Uh, to, to go over one big example, uh, UL. Uh, who I actually did get to talk about uh, the last time I was on here because she had, right. she was just fresh out of the DLC. Right, album. that's right. Yeah. Um, she she throughout that lifespan actually got known to be pretty strong uh, as a character. She she was uh, also kind of popular as well. On top of that, so she was kind of running amok around, but she wasn't like she wasn't like Belial when he came out kind of deal. She right. was just a very strong character who was also popular. Right. Uh, 
she got very slight changes uh, that looked like a lot worse than they actually ended up being. Mm. But like the community kind of sat down with it, you know, and they were like, okay, well, how do we, how do we get around these nerfs that, uh, oh, wait, this actually just becomes like a rock, paper, scissors game rather than you all just wins. <laughs> uh, and in particular, that situation is she has a far reaching normal that uh, where she spins and it hits twice, right? Super easily hit confirmable goes very far because it lunge forward uh, and, you know, you can cancel it into whatever, right? So that ended up being made negative on block. Uh, mm -hmm. Negative enough that uh, you could actually punish her if it wasn't spaced properly. Gotcha. And so what people have been doing is they just, they, they create a rock, paper, scissors situation. They go, okay, I can just spot dodge and if you press a button, I whip punish your button, right? Or I can, you know, do EXDP or yada yada, whatever. It, it, becomes, it becomes more interactable but it's still strong enough that the opponent has to think about it. Right. 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 Uh, that was just one example. Um, Gran got some some buff changes. Uh, at, yeah, Blue, Blue actually mentioned it in the chat. Gran can play the fireball game now. <laughs> so yeah. he got he got nerfed at the very uh, uh, at like the beginning of season two. He got he got kind of a big nerf. Uh, and then you know they've been just like slowly adjusting him back. And I think right now this patch he's probably in a really good place. <laughs> Unfortunately, the patch is very recent. So I can't say how it affects the meta as a whole. Mm -hmm. A lot of people specifically think that this patch is actually not so big of a change that things won't change up crazy. Uh, which is weird, because a lot of these patches have been actually a little bit bigger, outside of the ones that they specifically mention are bug fixes, right? Uh, this one is a lot smaller, so things are basically about the same. There's just some like, alright, this was oppressive, We this this probably should go, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in regards to Anre... Uh, the character's actually really cool. I, I'm, I'm a little sad that the character's really cool because I hate Onre. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so obviously the day he came out, you guys saw literally everyone and their mother putting on Twitter, uh, Evo Moment 37 of him parrying right. every super in the game or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? <laughs> but he does more than that. Like, he does so much more than parrying. <laughs> it's, uh, so one of the things, though, is, like, the parrying mechanic for him. It has recovery, right? But you can mash the parry, so you can get you can get caught out of like mashing the parry by whomever you're fighting against if they're paying enough attention, right? right. So it, it has its downside. You're not just going to be able to just mash that button and just get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so like the character actually has incredibly long range. Uh, one of his he has he has something that's a little unique to him on his normals. His five H, his far five H, excuse me. Uh, he, it's it has like a really long startup. And wind up right, but then he goes like, like a third of the screen forward and lunges his giant spear. So it, it goes real far, and he can catch you off guard if you weren't ready for like the the wind up, I guess. But you have enough time to be able to kind of sit down and be like, oh, okay, he's probably doing five H here. Right. <laughs> um, but he has really good range. Uh, he actually has a way to combat fireballs because he doesn't have a fireball himself. He just has the spear, right? The spear it pokes. And it'll go through a projectile if uh, on, and you can also do a follow up, which kind of like it's like a very small explosion. It's not like huge or anything, but it's it's just to get the extra damage, right? Hmm. So, character right now, he's 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 uh he's doing well, but it's not like he's like hugely popular. And we also haven't had a ton of time with him so far. Um, MBK, whom is actually in my exhibition that we just announced a little bit ago, is one of the, I would say, probably the strongest Onre right now. Okay. Uh, another person that plays Onre is Diaphone. Uh, but Diaphone plays every character right. in the game, uh -huh. so I could just, I, I'm just going to tell you, whatever the next DLC character is, Diaphone plays that character, by the way. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so MBK, I would say, probably the best Onre right now, at least that I've seen. You know, maybe somebody else is going to show him up at some point, but uh, he ended up doing very well at like nlbc i think he won an nlbc with Onre at this point okay. right um so if you're curious about Onre, you know you haven't really gotten to play too much uh too much grand blue yet you can you can try check out mbk he's got a twitch stream he streams enough he plays other characters so you know you might not always catch him playing Onre, but i would say Onre is is one of his best in the repertoire for sure okay uh, unfortunately, I can't give you much more information on the character outside of, like, just what he does, which okay. is just basically be parry, and, you know, he, he has kind of, like, the usual, uh, he can cycle three X moves on knockdown and things like that, okay. uh, but it's, it's just a little bit early. <laughs> no. If I wanted to get back in this game again, and I wanted okay. to play a character that just likes to hit buttons, who would I play? <laughs> There's a couple of 
options for that actually. <laughs> um, Belial is is pretty good at that. Uh, Beelzebub is is pretty good at that. Okay. Uh, gosh, there's there's a lot of characters that just can hit buttons. Uh, now you could play Gran and do that, but I wouldn't call it optimal. He has the ability to do it, but I wouldn't call it optimal for Gran. Okay. <laughs> um, same thing with Lancelot. Actually, is Lancelot could do it, but I wouldn't call it optimal. Right? <laughs> I would say if you if you really want to just just mash buttons. Oh yeah, Charlotte is a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Charlotte is a good okay, one for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, okay, real talk. You know, I just mentioned how like with Andre, I I didn't like Andre, uh, mm. and I'm a little upset that he that he's kind of cool. Uh, they gave Charlotta, for the first time, in my personal opinion, something that I thought was cool. Because I have never thought that character was cool. <laughs> um, in this most recent yeah. patch, they gave her the ability to combo into Demon Flip, Command Grab. Uh, so she can do, like, weird ground-bound shenanigans now. Like, her, her uh, combo routes, like, opened up a little bit into some cool stuff. Uh, cool. It's... I don't know if it's optimal yet, but she can do it. <laughs> I'm gonna have sure. to call you out, Isaiah. I'm gonna have to call you out. Okay, this is this is. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right. What do you have against short characters, dude? Because <laughs> you said Charlotta and Andre. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the. So I've been playing Grand Blue Fantasy the phone game for like years and years and years. I'm not a big fan of the Harvin race, uh, which is what those those two are. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Oh, you're, they're, you're they're, a Harvin uh, racist, is what we're getting. Yes, at here. apparently. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> journalism and we just got you a bonic plague <laughs> the Harvins. you heard it here first it's just uh they i i personally feel like a lot of the harvin characters have really bad writing uh that's just me okay like okay. uh but that but you know that's uh there's fair. some really cool ones there's this one called Katziella. uh he's he's dope i have that that character in every one of my teams but okay. uh you know okay. I, if you don't play grand blue you probably don't <laughs> <laughs> like no i have no clue what you're talking about yeah exactly who that is but like point being uh i'm not a big fan of a lot of those characters okay. Fair. <laughs> so uh, in, you, you think i would like short people considering i'm like two foot four but <laughs> <laughs> two foot four huh all right i'm gonna so a lot of good stuff going on with the grand blue scene including things that you're doing uh, you're also doing a bunch of other stuff right now i've seen you lately commentating not just that, but Caliber, you did Mortal for a while. You, you've been super busy lately. Uh, I've been really busy, yeah. Like, like surprisingly busy. Oh, my, I want... <laughs> what was your question? <laughs> I just had to create the representation, that's all. So, okay, anyways. Yeah, I just... Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Wondering uh, about how you are juggling doing all these different commentary gigs for all these very different games and keeping on top of all of, all of them. This, this is my wheelhouse, dude. Like, that's just, that's all I can really say is, like, I, I just, I've always, I always started out as, like, a multi-game person. I played a ton of games uh, before I commentated, and then I went into commentating a ton of different games at the same time. Right. Uh, and I guess that just hasn't changed recently. They, like... Maybe in the middle of, like, commentary career, it started out as... I mean, not, not started out, but in the middle of my commentary career, it became that I was more of, like, one or two games at the time. Mostly because I just kind of, like, fell out of love with some of those other games I was doing. And then, again, now I'm just back on the saddle doing a bunch of different games. I just happen to like all these different games. The Mortal Kombat one was really funny, too, because I had sat down and started playing Mortal Kombat because of Ultimate, specifically. Mm -hmm. But with zero intention to commentate any of it. Uh, but they needed a backup for PlayStation, and so they're like, I, we, we need your help. So I was like, all right, well, I guess it's a good thing I just, like, sat down and tried to learn <laughs> some of the help. game. <laughs> awesome. well, uh, but yeah, like, all, all of the different games, they all have something that you can just kind of bring in from a different game and then, like, kind of tack on. Yeah. So it, it it's a lot more natural than it looks, I'd say. What, what's, what's your favorite game to play right now, actually? Like, which of all these games is, like in your heart the most soul caliber yeah <laughs> i don't really think that's a very Dave's difficult question answer. for me <laughs> well so like okay um like if you're talking about specifically like games that are are like very um uh getting a lot of opportunities right now i would say soul caliber um, I feel like there's never not going to be a place in my heart, though, for Blaze Blue Central Fiction. Oh, yeah. Uh, because I'm going to tell you right now, I just played like a, a three hour set before I got on this podcast <laughs> of, of Central Fiction. <laughs> nice. So, uh, yeah, no. Uh, Soul Calibur, I would say, is just like the main game for me right now. Uh, I don't really think that's like 
hard to say, to be honest with you. I love playing all the other games. I just play Soul Calibur a lot. Right. So. Yeah, no, Soul Calibur is... I mean, obviously, it's... I honestly think it might be my favorite fighting game of the current generation that I'm playing. It's the one I play the most, so... <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I mean, I see you on, on Tuesdays. I usually just can't... I just don't jump in all the time. Right. So, I mean, Tuesday you know, mornings. Monday, Monday nights, game. Tuesday mornings. So. Oh, that's what it is. Sorry, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I it's we're in quarantine. I don't know what day it is anymore. Dude, yeah. <laughs> I, hear you. I, I, hear you. I keep having to try to remember how many days it is until WandaVision comes back. So you know it's like <laughs> <laughs> one left, man. Keep... <laughs> yeah, that that's gonna go by pretty soon. Yeah, it's one more. But then Falcon and Winter Soldier will start up right away, so you know, it's all good. It's all good. <sighs> well, how's everything else going for you these days? Uh I mean, you know, it's 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 Work makes things busy, obviously, right? Uh, <laughs> like How's everything about going how for you besides all the clout and all the gigs that you clear? I am you know? so yeah. I mean, this is that's kind of what I'm asking famous. about because it sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. What's um, it like to live in you live in your shoes for a day. Tell us. Well, you know, I own, you, you see you see behind me, Bond Wonderland. Uh, I yeah. own all of this. Yeah, oh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's all from the PlayStation money. Uh, okay, how has okay. how COVID affected your Wonderland? I mean, I feel like <laughs> you would have less patrons during these times. Well, yeah, look, I mean, look behind me. There's nobody walking across the bridge. There's there's no one on the stairs. There's, there's just no one. Everybody's inside, as they should be. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's really expensive real estate because it's the only stage anybody plays on. <laughs> Worth a lot so of money when, right I was, there. When, when I was a Marvel 3 player, I, I actually did not like playing on the stage a lot of the time. I, I would always go to training mode stage instead, because uh, mm -hmm. that was the only other stage that didn't lie. Danger room. Danger <laughs> room. Yeah, the danger room. Danger room. Yeah. Original no, no, danger room. No, no. There's training original mode danger. danger room. Okay. Yeah, yeah, original danger room, which is training mode, not danger room. No, I, I always play danger room. Yeah, da danger room is the one that Tubo has behind him right now, and then training yeah, yeah, mode yeah, is the yeah. one I would exactly. That's yeah, the yeah. thing that I've always played. I think it's yeah, superior yeah. to Bond Wonderland in every way. <laughs> Same frame rate, no drops. It's way easier to see, but whatever. I'll, and let, the, I'll let the white Magnetos play on the white stage. We all know that's why Bond Wonderland got picked. <laughs> uh, if you happen to play Ratana on Bond Wonderland all the time was the worst. He would all because because he plays Magneto and he would always pick white Magneto, white, you know, whatever yeah. he was playing at the time, right? So. <laughs> Oh man, I miss Marvel. <laughs> Just the strategy. People don't Still realize, here, man. man. Never went away. I mean, David in Street Fighter Four was all about that red Zangief, red volcano tech oh. as well, right? So, you know, <laughs> red it, everybody, yeah. Red Hakan, yeah. Red Dan, yeah, yeah absolutely. The the, the, the the camouflage tech. It's a real thing, man. <laughs> it's a real. In, in BB Tag, in BB Tag, there's so many people playing uh, a specific color and then playing that and trying to play a stage that's related to that color because surprisingly online there are multiple stages you can pick in bb tag okay. but the online just sucks so right. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah I don't, I don't think the stage you pick matters very much <laughs> it does i promise garbo. you i promise you the stage matters <laughs> 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 i have run into just the game slowing down because you're on snowtown and somebody uses a projectile like it's it's yeah. bad <laughs> just do not pick snowtown if you can <laughs> Well, well, I'm glad to hear that things that are going well. Yeah. Is there is there anything you want to plug for yourself here besides the announcements? Where can people find you, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, you know, I don't really plug myself a lot these days. So well, I didn't everybody have already knows uh, who he is and where to find him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he gets gigged all the time, James. Yeah, James. I'm so <laughs> famous. Um, I uh, I mean, you guys can find me on Twitter, AddyBonicPlagueBB. Uh, maybe one day I will get Justy Bonic Plague by itself. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, I actually. Uh, that, that's there. where you can find me on Twitter. I definitely went there by accident, and whoever has it isn't doing anything with it. So <laughs> yeah, it's been like that for years. Yeah. Uh, my favorite is like is anytime I post about it. Um, he, uh, the one tweet he has ever made, that person has said, uh, it just says, um, just trying to figure things out. Right, so anytime I mention it, everybody always responds to my tweet with, "He's just trying to figure things out, man. Just leave him alone." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Let him rock, dude. There's so many cases of that in the FGC of people who would love to have a certain handle, and somebody has just had it for five years, ten years, and has never done anything with it. I was just talking with <laughs> Brian F about that. Defeat Lee has talked about that in the past. Dude, a lot of people have. Why do you think that. we're Ultra Chen TV on yeah, Twitter? Yeah, that's right. right? That's exactly, so... We. Ha we 
That's true. Wait, you, want you guys don't have a television channel? <laughs> no, we wanted Ultra Chen originally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was oh my just God. supposed to have been Ultra Chen. Anyway, uh, James, can you put the pick back up just as we send him out of here so people can take another gander at it? Hey! Yeah, so I'll mention it real quick. Yeah, so I did just announce the Grand Sky Rumble. It's going to be 16-player Parsec Invitational Tournament featuring some of our most wonderful community members in not even just the player aspect, but also the production and commentary aspects as well. So March 14th, guys, uh, 1 p.m. Make sure to check it out on twitch.tv slash jeffthehero. And, you know, even if you're just, like, remotely thinking about a little bit of Grand Blue, I implore you to just take a look at it, because I feel like this will showcase and show you what Grand Blue Versus is all about right now. Um, and I want people to play the game. So Yeah, so again, this is two weekends from now on Sunday. So not this weekend, but the next weekend on Sunday, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Yeah, and we'll definitely plug it next week as well, just to remind everybody. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, if, if you're if you're unaware of those players on that that screen right there, because uh, you don't watch Grand Blue, these are some of the best players, period, just right. in in North America. So there you go. Which go. is which is awesome to see because I remember a long time ago we were even talking about how we weren't even sure who some of the strongest players were at the beginning, but now definitely very well established. So it'll be awesome to watch these guys. I'm definitely gonna tune in on this and and, and check this out. Yeah, I, I I think you'll have a good time. I really do. <laughs> but thank big you so much, guys. Uh, I don't. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I would say big up to Super Saiyan Kid. I uh, I played him when Grand Blue first came out in tournament, and he DM'd me, "Hey, man, it's my first tournament match and stuff like that." Wow. And then I, I destroyed him on stream. <laughs> really, really badly. But he stuck it out, and he's actually DM'd me again to, to let me know that he will take revenge one day. So oh, I believe so, him. So. Speaking about Super Saiyan Skid specifically, um, you can go back and check a lot of those Midwest events that have been happening. That is someone. That is the epitome of someone on this list who has just leveled up since the game came out. Like they are so strong now. Super good player. I cool. I feel like I am the cause of this. I'm taking 100 well. percent. Thank you 100 of the credit. Super Saiyan Kid has not worked hard. It was all me inspiring him to be his greatest self. So. Got the tub of wear bump. All right. You're welcome, Super Saiyan Kid. Uh, thanks so much for having me right, on, dude. guys. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming on. Later, homie. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see y'all. Peace. Hey, dude. All right. All right. So. That's very cool. Uh, it sounds like he's doing a lot of work for the scene. And, I mean, that's not a surprise, right? That's definitely who he is. Very, very cool to see that continuing. Check it out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, for me, like I said, I mean, I've always felt like one of the games that suffered the most from the pandemic was Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. But yeah, sure. it sounds like that they're kicking it really well. It's just more that it doesn't get the... Uh, you know, uh, public publicity that it deserves, but the the scene is very dedicated to it. There's a lot of people still playing it, and so, you know, hopefully, I mean, I, I you know, I'm doing the Soul Caliber thing. I'm I'm actually thinking about starting to do a casual Grand Blue thing as well, just so I can learn it and play, which is why I oh, asked cool. the question, you know. So I, I would like to get back into it. I'd like to see uh, if I can get back into the game and everything like that. So I'm excited for Grand Blue. I'm happy to see that it is still going strong uh, despite yeah, the pandemic. Awesome. Great. Shout out to Funko for the subscription there. All right, so let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about some 5-5 five -five matchup stuff, starting with our own topic here, which, of course, is going to be all the recent news about regarding Nairo. So we'll be right back. Uh, don't go anywhere. Let me ask you guys in the chat, actually, uh, just as a little informal poll here. Um... There's been a lot of talk within the within the three of us actually of actually moving away from the desk view and just putting us in three separate cameras and stuff like that because it can be kind of distracting or whatever like that. I mean, I'm just wondering how much do you guys feel like that's actually a part of the show uh, and uh, because, I mean, like I said, there's weird situations where you... I mean, obviously hilarious when David eats a cat butt and stuff like that. But uh, I'm curious to see uh, what people say about that. 
seems like people like the desk. Yeah. Also, just to point out, I see you guys talking about cats. Cats will still jump up on James's window. <laughs> there just won't be. Well, maybe on mine too. I yeah, mean, it's miles aside to come out. Heck, David. Like the, the, the cats won't go away. Okay. But it does. It does look like they they like the desk. Okay. I mean, it seems like a, a lot of people uh, have. Uh, some people are saying like either. Some people are saying they understand the the interest in moving away from it. But it sounds like a lot of people are, uh, uh, you know, they like it. But either way, so looks like a lot of work to set up. You're not wrong, Commander. Well, I mean, it wouldn't be any less to set up, to be honest with you, even if we switched it the other way. <laughs> Uh, basically, Kaushik is just more for, more for professional, professional, you know, more of a professional, more of an official look, less distracting kind of thing, so, um, uh, <coughs> just looking at modern guys. Nobs321, the answer to that is that they are both equally amazing, all animals are the best. And uh, I hate cats versus dog arguments, despite being a cat head, obviously, but I also still love dogs, and I think dogs are the greatest thing ever. We don't deserve dogs as well, so. I think that's such a weird argument, yeah. I, I, I was thinking about this the other day. When I was growing up, I didn't know any cool cats, and I only saw cartoons where cats and dogs hated each other, so I was always just like, well, that probably is true. I don't know, who knows? And then now, as an adult, I know so many families that have a cat and a dog, or multiple of both, or whatever, and they all get along. They love each and, other. <laughs> and then, yeah, they're like, yeah, best I, I grew up with both. Right, I don't know how that narrative got started, but cartoons, it's absurd. cartoons, cartoons are to blame but, for but why. But why? Why did like did, was one of the cartoonists happen to have a cat and a dog who didn't like each other? Like was that the version right. of this? I don't, it was I don't probably know. just to create that rivalry, you know, because. Cats and dogs hating each other came from cartoons. Mice liking cheese comes from cartoons. Cats drinking milk comes from cartoons. But rabbits loving <laughs> carrots comes from cartoons. Yeah. All these things are cartoon origin. They're not actually true. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, whoa. Rabbits do actually love carrots. Yeah, but they like celery more, I think. Or is it no celery or something else? You catch more mice with peanut butter, and uh, cats are actually lactose intolerant. Yep, don't give cats milk. All right, let's come back. <laughs> uh, hold on, I'm not, I'm not ready. Hold on a second. Oh, you're not? Okay. No, I'm not even, yeah. I'm, I'm dying here. Oh, you okay? Uh, yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm dying for other reasons. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Uh, but my filter's on, so you can't hear me dying. Just give me, like, ten more seconds, guys. I'll be ready. Okay. You got it. Go and mute right now. All right, welcome back, everybody, to the Tuesday show. Thanks once again to Isaiah for joining us on the show, but it's time to move on to some other topics here. Uh, what do we got, uh, David? So let's move on to the 5-5 five -five matchup at the beginning here, um, which we're doing of our own, and then we'll get to, to viewer ones. Um, so I just I wanted to talk about this unban Nairo hashtag that's been going around. So Nairo is a... Smash player, or maybe a former Smash player, you might even say, who has been uh, banned for the last while. Uh, after news came out um, alleging that he had molested Captain Zack, who was a teenager in the Smash scene. I believe he uh, was 15 at the time. Was 15 at the time, yeah, exactly, yeah. And that was, um, that was like I said, a, a while ago. After that, um, there were other allegations that came out that, in fact, it was the other way around, that Captain Zack was the one who was at fault, that Nairo felt terrible about it, that he felt very confused about it, and, you know, he was the adult, and so he kind of blamed himself. Um, so, so allegations that he admitted to, but also m maybe it was more complicated than that, and um, he remains banned. Last week, he put out a video that was uh, basically him saying that there had been some kind of legal situation involved between, well, he doesn't even say between who, but you assume it's it's him and Zach, and that that, that had, had been resolved. 
He doesn't really go into it. And so I don't really know what that means, whether there was something that was in the criminal process or whether it was civil, in which case maybe it was a settlement, maybe money changed hands in some way. I, you know, he doesn't go into it. Um, but he does say that that is something that he views now as being behind himself, that he's kind of moving on from this and that he would like to get back into playing and streaming and making content. Um, and that at the same time, there have been people who uh, have been asking for him to come back, right? People who are fans of his, people who kind of have, have heard that the story is more complicated, that maybe actually Zach was the one at fault. I'm not going to take a position on that part of it. I feel like the, I don't know. Right. I have read all the stuff that's out there, but in situations like this, very frequently, there's more that's out there that is just not public. Right. I don't know that that's the case here, but I just the point is I'm not going to like take a position on whether I think this is something that should be done or not. Right. Taking you know responsibility either way, um, but this has been a big uh, movement in the Smash scene over the past week. It was trending number one on Twitter. This hashtag, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, super, super uh, uh, popular. A lot of a lot of momentum behind it. So with that in mind, I think it would be interesting to talk about like what are some of the circumstances in your guys' mind where a situation like this can be sort of reversed right. or whether there's situations in which something like this would be overturned. Um, obviously in the last half year or a little longer than that now, Situations like this have been extremely important in the FGC. We've had a lot of conversations about this, not just now with the mm -hmm. things like the FGC Code of Conduct, but before when all the news was coming out, you know, how to handle this is obviously a, a big deal that we haven't been doing enough of as a scene. Uh, so these questions, I think, are super important, and this seems like a good opportunity to talk about them. Yeah, I mean, for, first of all, I mean, I know there's probably a lot of people like, why didn't Nairo you know, counter this a lot more when he was younger and everything like that. And, you know, obviously he was really young at the time too. And gosh, I mean, you're probably not ready to handle this kind of a situation. So, you know, whether he's at fault or not, if he wasn't at fault, you know, why didn't he X, you know, do such and such? It's a hard thing to deal with, man. It's, it's, it's kind of a, this, this, this happens a lot. You know, and that's that's kind of the main thing that I just kind of want to get across that these kind of situations happen a lot, you know, that people I, aren't sure how to handle it. So I think he was five years older at the time. I think he was 20. Yeah, I think my, so. my memory. Yeah. So, I mean, that is, that is young compared to us, but also substantially older than somebody who's 15. Well, what I'm I'm saying, what I'm saying is that 20 years old is young. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 20 years old is young, right? So, but like I said, that's only assuming that he was the victim and I'm I, like I said I'm not going either direction so uh, I'm not saying that he was a minor or anything like that I'm just saying yeah. at 20 years old I guess you know once you get to my age 20 years old sounds like you know you were still a baby and like when I think back I to hear when I think back to 20 years old I'm like I didn't know jack shit about the world right so <laughs> sure yeah it yeah. was when i was 20 that i almost got arrested three times in the same night in mexico after all oh <laughs> <Right. laughs> uh, man good night man i don't know what you're talking about Dave. yeah anyways uh yeah i don't know man i so i to answer david's question which was what are like situations where we could forgive people and let them back into the FGC. I think the only real answer to that is when the general public feels safe to be around them. And it really depends on what they did. I mean, you know, if you got caught doing graffiti or something or jaywalking and you end up in jail because our justice system is trash, I really doubt you get banned from FGC events. You know, like, I, I don't think anybody's going to give a crap. Um, but if you are molesting people and things like that and we don't know what the actual outcome of a, a of a case was whether it be civil or what we, we don't know we don't actually know we don't know what happened um in terms of the legal agreement like we don't know what type of anything that happened it's really hard to it's really hard to want to bring someone back after that i don't know like i I have very, very mixed feelings, if you guys can't tell. Like, it, 
Sure. I personally, I'm not like if if someone is in a legal battle for molestation, I'm not bringing them back to the FGC. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. I wouldn't want them at my events. However, streaming on Twitch is different. It's not. There's a, a, a much lower chance of them making someone feel unsafe because you don't have to watch that person stream, I guess. I don't know. It's it's such a gray area, and it's so hard to say. And I am not mentally or mature enough or ready or equipped or any of that to make those decisions. I'm so glad that I don't have to because it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that is... So when it comes to things like the FGC Code of Conduct, I am not involved in any decision-making with respect to bans and anything like that. I'm not, I'm not involved. Um, I can, I guess, review stuff for legal purposes, but that's very different than making any decisions. Right. Um, so, because, because I, I agree. These are these are really hard questions to to answer. Um, yeah. I, and and I think that I come at it from a similar angle, which is that what I am most concerned about is the safety of the other people who would be in the area, right? Who would who would be at an event? Um, that that to me is the number one sort of factors number one concern so if it's the case you know there are certainly things that i can imagine happening that i think would suck that wouldn't also put people in like fear of any negative things right danger being harassed being abused racism whatever um so those it's you know doing something that's bad is not necessarily the same as putting other people in kind of negative situations like that right um but i also think that there's things that will have the opposite effect that will instead make people definitely worried. And I don't know when it is that people no longer are worried about that, but it's also important to me that there be, you know, some some path for that, that there, that there be some discussion right. about when that is, because yeah. I do not want it to be the case that we sort of come to decisions and then never never look back at them. I, I, I ideally, and this is the case for me, like in terms of how I view the justice system in general, uh, I really am focused not so much on punishment as much as trying to help people out. Right? That's for me is the goal. And as just a, a fighting game scene, we can't really be concerned with things like that are broad topics like justice. We just don't have the resources for that. That's right. that's why the state exists, right? And so that that is where those questions should be answered for the most part. They need to be answered better than they currently are, but like that is where it should be happening. Um, but still, the point is that like it's important for me to be for there to be some way that people can move forward eventually, at least in in many circumstances. Yeah. Um, I mean... So so yeah, if if it is the case that the scene doesn't feel like somebody like in Nairo's position with his story, with things that have gone on, um, that they're not concerned about him. I guess for me, that seems fine. You know, then, then that's kind of the answer that I'm looking for, that if enough people are cool with that, um, if, there's, if there's in general thought to not be a concern that something would happen again. And just based on the story, it sounds like maybe there wouldn't be, you know? Uh, again, I'm not gonna have a answer on, a position on that, but it, it, it seems like maybe that's true. I mean. So yeah, I, I guess could be in the situation that that's reasonable. I haven't looked into the situation too much. I just read very tangentially on it. I mean, it sounds like what's happening here is that there might be enough evidence that you know Nairo was the victim and not the the you yeah. know the person causing trouble. If I mean, if that is what the case is, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think an unbanning is 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 right if he if he's literally the victim. Uh, I think that's the right thing to do, right? Because if he's the victim, then there's really shouldn't be any reason, like Tubo was saying, that you know right. people feel yeah. unsafe about yeah. it. But again, we do we is there any sort of established, or is this just all currently just talk right yeah, now? Yeah, exactly. Right? That's when I was saying like we don't know. Right. I mean, uh, some of the stuff. You know, so again, I've only read the things that are out there publicly, but it seems like some of the things Zach later admitted to not having been true. With, allegations that Zach had paid hush money payments. Zach later admitted it wasn't true. And some of Zach's stories were things that um, seemed like they couldn't have been true at the time or that changed over time. And there are allegations that it's this 
this kind of in, of sort of creation of stories is something that he had done other times as well. So it sounds like there is some stuff that could be tending mm. towards, you know, Nairo not having done it. Again, I'm not going to have a position on that, but that, yeah. that that seems like it could be the case. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I guess I'm just wondering, is there any more work being done legally or anything like that? Or is this just pretty much at this point in time, it's he said, she said, you know, kind of a situation, you know? Yeah, I think that kind of is how it is. Okay. I wish okay. that whatever legal process happened, I would want to know more about. Unfortunately, settlements, if that is what happened, often come with non-disclosure agreements so that they can't be publicly discussed. Mm -hmm. It's very frequently the case, especially if there is a monetary settlement. So people will basically trade money for this issue not coming back up again. Right? Mm -hmm. um, and if that's the case here, then we're just not going to know, unfortunately. Right, yeah. Yeah, and that, that makes it harder to forgive. You know, it makes it mm -hmm. harder to have a road of redemption for Nairo, I think, or yeah. anybody in that situation. We don't know what was determined. We, so how can we, you know, right. progress from there? It's, and that, it's that, a very, yeah, it's a very sketchy situation. Yeah. And, and that for me is the key, right? Is that, I mean, it's, it's tough because like you said, you can't really talk publicly about it because, you know, there's a lot of legal reasons not to, right? Like a lot of times something happens and they're always, you, you know, you always see celebrities or whatever, like I can't speak anymore on this. And, yeah. you know, there's all these, you know, restrictions and stuff. And I, I guess that makes it hard. But if there is no actual conclusion, then yeah, at this point in time, I, I think Tubo is, you know, absolutely right on this. It's just, does the public feel safe? You know, does the public feel safe? Do people feel like that they would would not be feel threatened to have someone return to the scene and such? And that's kind yeah. of a, 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 a the, probably the main factor at this point. I think that makes sense. Yeah, there's got to be two sides of it where you view. Yeah, it has to be viewed as both a, an individual thing and sort of a collective thing. It's got to be mm -hmm. both. Where you're, it would be absurd if you were to punish somebody as an individual who did something who didn't do anything wrong because the community would feel better All right so you want to make sure that the individual is getting like appropriate mm -hmm. justice or whatever right but at the same time you want to make sure that the community is going to feel safe and if yeah if they if they feel safe i they i i think that's cool with me i right so anyway yeah it, it's it's a hard thing to talk about because we don't know everything that has right. gone down um but as a, as a general sort of discussion, right, just using this generally, I totally agree with you guys that in this kind of a case where it's kind of hard to know, if the community views it as being something that they're okay with, that they're not concerned about public safety anymore, then yeah, cool with me. Yeah. And, and again, you have to make sure that it's like large form consensus kind of thing. <laughs> of course, of course, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, when I first heard about it, I was, you know, I saw the hashtags going around and wasn't sure how widespread that view was, but, mm. you know, something gets number one on Twitter from a small scene, even like the Smash scene is bigger than most scenes, right? But it's still small, all things yeah, considered. For sure. um, that, so, that seems like it indicates probably a lot. It was actually trending like worldwide, not even just like in... Uh, trending number one in the United States for in the United several States. Okay, okay, yeah, that's what I figured, okay. Anyway, okay. Interesting right. topic of discussion for sure. So let's move on to the viewer questions. Again, we have a bunch here because last week we also had quite a few and we didn't get to them because we had such a busy show. So instead, this time we have 10 questions taken from both last week and this week combined. And let's get to them. Number one. Do you think that fighting game devs could get away with wasting a slot on a joke character as easily as they used to back in the day? Number two, what do you think is the first step in recreating an arcade-like experience online? Number three, have you continued playing a game you don't enjoy because you like the community or your friends like it? Number four, are fighting games more like chess or like sports? Um... James, I think I know what you're looking for, and I think I forgot to put it in there. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, 
like, I'm gonna. He can I'm see gonna, my screen right now. <laughs> I was like, Yeah, what uh, is my the bad. Polling? That's because we're in the same room, James. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he's. We're in the same room. Clearly, clearly. So yeah. Uh, boy, where would that be? It was sent out as a as an email, so it's probably in the email. Okay. My bad. No, it's all good. At least I, I know it wasn't me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't uh, dropped the ball on this before. Bummer. Uh, it happens. All right. So I am going to put this in our little group chat so you can have access to it. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. In the Discord, you mean here, David? In the Discord, yeah. I'm just opening it up. Okay, okay. Uh, in the meantime, I guess I can keep reading the questions over here. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah. number, <laughs> number five: What absent Guilty Gear characters can be a good fit for Strive mechanics? Uh, number six, James mentioned that he believes Guilty Gear Strive is a heart game. I think it's uh, all three, to be honest, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, are there any examples of games that weren't heart games at launch but became so later on? Uh, another question is, what are the most important factors for a modern fighting game's longevity? What will keep a game's community active slash alive? Then as a fighting game leaves the discovery phase and players begin to leave, do you think developers can do anything outside of simply introducing new characters to bring new players in? Or does this burden fall onto content creators to foster new players? Let me add a question mark to that real quick. Um, <laughs> which fighting game IP would you want to see in a different video game genre? And what, in your opinion, is the best single player content for fighting games so there you go all right well here's the results we have a tie between number eight and number 10 which is great because we budgeted time to answer multiple of these so let's get to number eight first which is as a fighting game leaves the discovery phase and players begin to leave do you think developers can do anything outside of simply introducing new characters to bring new players in or does this burden fall onto content creators to foster new players for their game? Oh boy, okay. <laughs> this is showing up as a blank right now. And uh, let me, while you guys answer this, I'm going to try to squeeze this in. Woo! Here we go. All sorts of stuff on the fly. Uh, so when a game leaves the discovery phase, first of all, I think that tends to take a really long time these days. It's it, the case certainly that in games that are several years old, there's still new stuff to discover, um, sure. in part because there are new characters that do come in, and in part because there are patches very frequently nowadays. Uh -huh. uh, that is to say, most games have patches, not that it happens frequently, but most games will have patches like minimum once a year, really. So there tends to be new stuff to find for a while. So I'm not sure that that phase like, ends, really, in the same sort of way that it used to. But nevertheless, like there is some point where many players begin to leave, in many cases, right? There's like some threshold that's reached for whatever reason where players start to think, okay, a new game came out, I'll play that. Or I'm tired of this game or whatever it is. And games tend to sort of be funneled into just the people who really enjoy it. Sometimes that's still a lot of people, but yeah. you have shed some players at, at that point. Can so, developers do anything outside of yeah, so. new characters to go. bring in new players or does this burden fall on content creators so i would definitely say that in my view this burden is on the devs and i don't really know that content creators can make it happen in their stead for something that is uh, as niche as fighting games content creators can be helpful and i think there are at least a couple high profile examples of content creators doing big work but Almost always, I think they have a small role to play. And I think that's even true in other games, too. So I think that a big part of why games like Among Us became so popular was content creators kind of pushing that, making yeah, that fun to watch. I, absolutely. But at the same time, like, that game, that is so out of here, out of there random that that ended up happening. Right? That game had been out for so long at that point. Mm -hmm. It was just out of the, it's not reproducible, really. It's just something that happened. 
rather than content creators getting together and being like, all right, everybody, we're going to push this game. No, it was just a very organic thing that's really hard to have happen a second time. So I, I, I think in the FGC, maybe you would point to like probably only um, Gutex and Mike Ross and then Maximilian as being people who have like that kind of ability who did that kind of thing right well almost never i think uh, uh, other than that and for many games those guys weren't super interested in the games like developed pretty well anyway so i really think that this is largely on the developers themselves to make an interesting game that players want to keep playing and then either to keep it in a great state that players really enjoy or to tweak it and some players like those tweaks and they like that phase of getting to find new stuff afterward and and then if there's a good tweak that ends up in good stuff, a lot of players will stick around with that too. Interestingly enough, I, I think one of the companies that's been doing the best at this uh, when it comes to the developer's responsibility, what can developers do? Can they do anything? Absolutely, to bring in new content, uh, to bring in new players. And one of the best companies that doing this is Capcom, right? I mean, we obviously dog on Capcom a lot for a lot of different things, for you know, net code and all these things like that. But the fact that they keep releasing these updates to the game that you get everything <laughs> for like thirty dollars or forty dollars. I think is one of the most brilliant ways to keep people in there. Like, I want to start doing casual Samurai Showdown stuff. I go to the Epic Game Store. I have mm. to spend $100 to do this, right? I want to do this for Grand Blue Fantasy. I've got to spend like $110 to do this. Street Fighter V, I want to do this. I have to spend $40. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I and I get uh, a complete brand new game like that. And so I think uh, it's that's one of the best things the developers can do. So, you know, we talked about King of Fighters and how if they have rollback netcode, they can keep creating seasons. You know, new seasons obviously bring in more players. But if the new season also comes with, you know, it doesn't have to be every year. Like uh, Capcom has these collections every other year. They did it for the third year and for the fifth year to have these collections. Uh, but if you do stuff like that and create the new content by making it a nice complete package that people can actually obtain easily to get back into the game, I think is is really an important factor because honestly, new content in fighting games, while great, can be a burden at the same time, you know, for a lot of people trying to get into the game. And I think that's tough. So uh, yeah. outside of that, uh, honestly, the best way to do it is to keep trying to run these tournaments and stuff. I mean, I've always said that Ultra Street Fighter 4 would have never happened if it wasn't for the FGC because nobody would have cared. We probably would have stopped after A. <laughs> Dude, I don't even think it would have got to A E if the, if the you know FGC didn't care. Yep, agreed. Honestly, and so you know to 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 have these kind of sales and to bring more people in, the tournament scene is really kind of important. And and I think. You know, obviously we're not big enough to really affect anything right now, but we are still one of the best marketing tools as in look at League of Legends, right? Like, <laughs> like clearly LCS is one of their best marketing tools. And if uh, yep. fighting game devs can realize that, I think, and, and really work on putting on bigger productions, I think the stuff that Capcom Cup, Street Fighter League, these kind of things like this are actually really well done. I, I honestly think Capcom's doing a, a really great job with a lot of this. And one of the reasons why Street Fighter V does seem to stick around uh, long and really kind of have this prosperous lifestyle is li uh, lifespan I should say is because I really do think the Capcom esports team is doing a lot of really good stuff and uh, I think they're looking at it right and you know hopefully Arxis will do stuff with Strive that way you know etc uh, but I do honestly think the tournament scene is kind of valuable to keeping a game alive yeah yeah and I mean you know, the question is ask, you know, does this burden lie on content creators? And I don't... So, content creators don't owe developers shit. I, I just want to make that clear before I say mm -hmm. any of this. They, they they, don't. They don't have to make this stuff. They they do it because they love the games, right? Yeah. Um, with that said, though, I do think that, like, what exactly what James said, uh, that the tournament scene, and, and, and a lot of people will say, well... Tournament players are only like 1% of the overall people that buy the game, and that's correct. However, anybody who sticks with the game beyond, you know, the first two weeks as a fighting game, 
they're going to be watching the tournaments. They're going to be watching the the tournament level players. They're going to be take that. That's how you get into the FGC. And uh, so that's I I mean I would imagine if a fighting game keeps forty percent of its player base, the the devs are happy, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people buy the game, they play through single player, they they do that stuff, and they're done with it. They, they you know they play their friends a little bit, and then they get tired of it and go back to to fork knife or whatever. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I I think that that absolutely the the, the devs should keep adding stuff and and making more people want to buy the game because that's in their best interest. But what ends up what ends up happening is the tournament scene and the content creators are the ones doing the majority of the pushing of the game for them, mm-hmm. regardless of the new features that come in or not. Uh, it just it, it's not that these it's not that a burden lies on content us the content creators do it. We want to do that stuff. So I, I don't think yeah. there's a burden on either side. The devs want to make money, so they're going to keep adding stuff to the game, and we love the game, so we're going to keep making content. It's more of a uh, like symbiotic rela- symbiotic relationship yeah. uh, that's going on there. <laughs> yeah, phrasing it as a burden, I agree with you, is not really correct. Um, but you know, whose responsibility is it? Who, which party is the onus on? However you want to phrase this. And I do think that it largely lies with the developer primarily to just make a good game and to have things that are continuing to be fun. That would for sure because you, you're right that content creators don't stick with games that they don't enjoy. And that's exactly. true for everybody. It's true for us at kind of like the small to middle level. And it's true at the biggest level too. Not just, you know, players like Max, if you watch his stream, he's not, he doesn't sugarcoat stuff. Like he'll tell you when he thinks the game sucks, right? Yeah. He's like very, he'll just let you know <laughs> he thinks something's bad. Uh, Ares will do the same. And and then you, you watch people who have truly large streams and some of the, sometimes some of them will sell out a little bit, but that almost never lasts. You know, they'll go back to games that they actually enjoy pretty quickly, um, and in part because people can tell when they're not interested in the game. Like that's sure. obvious to the viewers for sure, and so it's like not good content anyway. Uh, but yeah, it, the games have to be fun. That's I think really what it is about. The games have to be fun and keep people's attention. That's the developers. Good game lasts forever, man. <laughs> A good game is a good game forever, basically. So if you make a good game, people will keep playing it. I mean, look at the Twitch rivals, right? We brought back Marvel 3 and Killer Instinct, right? So it's the way Yeah, and this is, this is part of what I mean when I say that I think there are a couple of content creators who do have that kind of reach because unlikely that those things would have gotten 40,000 viewers if they hadn't been pushed by Max and been on Max's channel. You know, if that mm-hmm. had been on somebody else's channel, it wouldn't have gotten the same views for sure. Um, so I, I do think that there's certainly a role. I just think that it... I think that we we sort of naturally feel like we want to overrate our effectiveness as content creators because it's just, we're like involved in it. So it's what we're thinking about all the time. And if people in the chat like watch a lot of content as i do too you know um it's that's what i'm involved in whether i'm making it or not like i'm basically watching fighting game stuff right like right. most of my free time where i'm just <laughs> hanging out is i'm watching or playing fighting games like that is a huge amount of my time uh, so i feel like it's important because of that but i also know that like we're still a tiny percentage of right. the population and and the player base so. yeah it's it's interesting because I, I, it's it's really is about the symbiote, right? I mean the the, the sim symbiotic relationship. I, I feel like come on, guys, <laughs> just making fun of that trailer. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really do feel like there is a little. You know, you're right. Our scene isn't big enough to really affect a lot of it, but at the same time, it's big enough to affect part of it. I just feel like sure. they could utilize us a lot stronger than they do. You know, and and it's it's. It's a, it's a shame that they... What the hell are my cats doing? Uh, it's a shame that they don't. <laughs> uh, they're agreeing yeah. with you strongly, James. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They're yelling at each other about which one agrees with you more. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, that's definitely... They're yelling at each other about, when's he feeding us? When's he feeding... Anyways. <laughs> Anything else to say on this one? Uh, no. Uh, no. I'm, I've, I've said it all. You've said it all. Said it all, Boko. 
Thanks, Burbo Ware. Number 10 also tied, by the way. Number 10 is, what, in your opinion, Oof. is the best single player content for fighting game? This is, I think it's very cool that this is, or very telling maybe, that this is what ended up tying out of all these 10 questions, because I think that quite a few of these are interesting ones. Um, and yeah, some, some people in the FGC underrate how important single player content is, but I totally agree that it's important. And I also think that there like is a correct answer to this, and it's in NRS games. It's basically Mortal Kombat 11 and Injustice 2 are the correct answers. They have the best story modes. They have the most to do. You can customize your little dudes the most. Um, you have recurring content that gets changed all the time. Every single day you lo log in, there's something new to do, uh, new new stuff to get. They're always uploading new like gear for your little dolls that you can put on them. Um, and they kept doing that for years for Injustice 2. And now we're in, was this year two for MK11? And there's no sign of that stuff slowing down either. So. I think I think that's totally the answer. If it's the game that people want to play or not is a different question, obviously. But right. they got all the stuff. Yeah, well, I think that they do. I've played great. I've played a lot of fighting games over my lifetime, and especially in the last like 12, 13 years. And I can tell you, the one thing that I've played single player the most of by far is the Marvel Three training mode. So I think. <laughs> The best single player what a nerd. Is, is a great training mode. Because what a I'm a nerd. competitive player. I don't I don't I don't give a shit about the story. That's like like I you know, I quoted uh Hanzo Gonzo last week. Like the teams for, for KOF, I, I don't give a shit. Like I, I don't care. I don't play fighting games for lore. I don't play for story. I play them because they're fun and the characters are cool and they do wacky shit. Right? So I, I think Putting, for me personally, this obviously is not true for the general population. Yeah. But putting amazing training mode features in training mode, that's the best single player content, in, in my opinion. Okay. Hmm. I mean, well, MK11's got a great training mode, so, you know, <laughs> check it out. Uh, I mean, I'm always just going to come back to the, the answer I always give is uh, things like home run contest and break the targets are some of my favorite uh, one-player content because there's an inherent competitiveness to them and they're educational at the same time. And I'm talking about original Melee uh, home run contest. I'm not talking about the new baby stuff that they put in the new Smash <laughs> games where the where the bag can't actually fall off the platform. That's garbage, um, by the way. Uh, what what a about, random take to be elitist on. I'm, yeah, I'm being elitist, elitist on classic the new home baby run contest. Home okay? run mode. Dude, <laughs> modern home run contest is a joke, okay? Like, seriously. No, but I mean, content like that I think is important because what it does is it gives people the ability to play a game as a game and unintentionally learn. And and, sure. and, and it's fun. Yeah. And it's fun as well. It's a training mode with a goal, right? Break the targets is always, it's a training mode for how to move and how to use your moves, right? Like they'll make it so that you have to PK Thunder so a target with the actual bullet and then one of them will be better to hit yourself into to travel at the same time. Pikachu, if you find out you can teleport and hit things, something's way up there so you PK Thunder, I'm not PK Thunder, but you know, Pika Thunder, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, have a lightning bolt come down. You get a lot of education for this. I've been wa I've been pushing for these kind of things in fighting games for a really long time to try to build similar kind of things. A home run contest was about trying to learning how to do damage. Right, break the targets was not about damage. It was about how to move your character. You could break something with a jab, or you could break something with a with a falcon punch. But once you got to the bag, then it was about how do I keep the bag on the platform? You start learning about how things get knocked back further. You learn about sweet spots. I learned about short hop with Yoshi because of that. So I could just do jump down A. You know, you learn all these things about it. And the more of these like little games, and now that we're online, you put the records online and not counting the people who are gonna hack it and put themselves to a million feet, you know, for the home run contest. 
you're going to be like, my Donkey Kong got like 1,600 feet. I'm the best. And then you go online and you, and you see like 1,900 and you're like, what? And you watch their replay. You'll learn that way. And then you're trying to mimic it and you'll gain a skill that way. I just think that that kind of stuff is super important in fighting games, uh, more so than a lot of other one player features in there because it, it fools you into learning. And I think that that's really good. Yeah, I mean, it has that Mario, Super Mario Brothers level one or Mega Man X first stage. Yeah. You, know, you, learn, you learn the game through playing it. Yeah, I agree. That's that's really cool stuff, too. I, I can't I can't hate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. I mean, dressing up your doll, though, on the other hand. is super important. <laughs> it is. It is. I'm not even joking about it. I'm this. not either. I'm talking okay, yeah, with you. Okay, yeah, I think it you. is really Because how much I, money is made right now? on just the fact that you can dress up your dolls in Fortnite oh. and Counter-Strike and every game out there that sells cosmetics. I like, don't care dollars. about any of that. I, I must be like the only person who just, I couldn't care less about any of that. When there's, when you, when you like have to create a character in a video game, I just mash A through it. I don't care. I'll like, tell you, I'll tell you. I, I'll tell you I so much rather they create it. the character for me. Uh, Tupperware, I can't believe that. I hate it, dude. I just don't care that you much. You mash through that? Usually, yeah. If, if, if there's no fat option, yeah, I'll mash through it. And a lot of games don't, they don't support fat people. So That's true. I just, I just mash straight through it. But if there's a fat person option, then I'll, I take the time to actually create myself if I want them to look like me. I'll Is it always yourself? Usually, yeah. I'll tell Man. you this. It's because you're young, Tubo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 33. I'm not young, man. I'm I, told, I tell you, man. no. I mean, it's it's because you're still very hardcore into it. I mean, if when I was 30, I'd probably say a lot of the same. But I'm just at a point right now where I, I'm a clearly on the way out in terms of quality of play, and so it's about growing the scene now. And so these things are really important to me. And so you know. I understand that a lot of people need this kind of thing to stay interested in fighting games. Not everyone's going to be as hardcore as you. <laughs> Dude, the towers get played so much. There are so many people who are playing MK who are just grinding towers every day. Dude, my friend... Never, played... never play online. They're just on there. And they feel like they're learning stuff and they're getting cute dolls. So why not? Dude, my friend played Injustice for over 100 hours and zero seconds of that was online ranked. Online matches. I can't. I can't. Yo, I, I literally, you. I cannot imagine playing a fighting game against a computer for that long and having fun. I, they I do couldn't. a really good job at making the computer uh, effective at different levels. Like their low rank, their like low level opponent is really easy, but their high level opponents are actually really hard. And they and it, and not hard in the sense of old school AI where it's just stupid and cheesy. Like they. Right. They're mixing you up, honestly. And and you get to dress up your... I can't stress this part enough. You get to dress up your dolls as well. <laughs> Couldn't care less, man. Couldn't care I can't less. stress that part enough. Yeah, I mean, the tough thing for Street Fighter, you know, talking about Street Fighter, you know, is like they have specific costumes, unlike Tekken, where you could just like put things on them, dress them up like that. But even still, the costumes are one of the biggest selling points for Street Fighter. I mean, yep. the reason why they've doubled down so hard on Chun costumes, and they're probably like laughing all the way to the bank that Jury won both of the, uh, you know, the, the the fan costumes, is they'll make money off of that stuff. So, <laughs> all you foot lovers out there, you get two new costumes. Yeah. <laughs> Can, can I tell you how many hours I've spent sitting in front of my computer here with my PS4 going on my other monitor and literally with my stick that has a, uh, a turbo button on it, just turboed to, to X so that I can go through the uh, MK11 towers as the CPU. Just grinding, just watching the CPU grind, 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 grind. I'm just doing work here. CPU is grinding for hours, <laughs> do you, and do with you, with my stick just mashing on X, do you so find that it gets heavy through. To put X, on X, X, the, X, X, X. you need a turbo controller and just you know like I used to do that on the shop at Final Fantasy to buy to buy potions because you could buy them one at a time. I put the chair leg on my Ness Advantage button just so it would turbo and buy the potions. You know, <laughs> this this little guy right here, 
this little guy that I bought for like 40 bucks on a sale one time. It has a turbo button on it, and I just put a yeah, put a little thing on top of it. Yeah. And it just it grinds and gets so many cute outfits for my dolls. I can't stress this part enough. Dude, I'll tell you this as well. On my Soul Calibur streams, you know how you can you can obviously dress up your characters a lot in that game. People have I have convinced me to open up five dollar donations so that they can create a costume so that they can keep using it on on their on my stream and so a couple of guys have already donated for that and so they're gonna get costumes on there so you know no, i'm telling you man this is this is the one part of content that people want <laughs> yeah I, like i guess i i'm just i'm just a competitive fighting game player so all yeah. that extra stuff doesn't no I, like sure. i know that when i go to the tournament i'm not gonna have that outfit so I just play sure. defaults usually, or like, you know, Street Fighter. They have like the big packs and all the tournaments buy those big packs. So I know that I'm going to have Honda Color 15 at the tournament. So right. I'll play that. But like, I'm not going to create like this dope ass character that I don't get to use when I'm on stream at tournament. Like that just doesn't make sense in my brain. <laughs> I'm not going to put the work in for that. So Let me I tell you how defaults. Let me tell you how pretty my Bane was in Injustice 2. I had all these cool colors. I had, it wasn't just default green. I had like a sick, like super cool red outfit and it was like kind of glowy. It was a kind of Tron looking situation. All right. Ugh. I and then that. you never got to use it in tournament. Doesn't okay. that make you sad? Like that would, that would just, I'd be so sad about that. Well. I guess I would rather use it in tournament, but what they need you know. to do is just come up with like a QR code or something, you know. I agree. That would be mm. sick. Genius. That would be super sick, yeah. All right. So in conclusion, we all ended up having different answers, even though obviously the real answer is NRS game. I think James <laughs> NRS No, James' answer is very good. It, NRS it really is, is actually clearly right now the paragon in terms of one player content. Like there's no question, but being as a person who sits there and thinks about this question like almost on an every day or every other day basis you know i still don't think anybody does it well you know uh nrs does it the best clearly the best but we have so much more to aspire to and i just think it's it's um i just think we're stuck on what we're used to and we're coming up with neat ideas, but it's it's not based off of like trying different things, you know. Sure. Even though I home run contest and break the targets are old, but you know, yeah. it's 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 important I think to have them. So, Makes sense. yeah, we don't see enough of that stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah, the Swamp Thing outfits were sick. In MK11, <laughs> Kotal's outfits are so cool. Anyway, all right. Well, just, we could talk. I could talk about this for a long time. These other two guys don't want to. Right. Let's go to the third one, which was number six. James mentioned that he believes Guilty Gear Drive is a heart game. Are there any examples of games that were not heart games that launched but became so later on? First of all, what do you mean by heart games? Uh, that's really, I really honestly didn't think this one was going to win at all. But uh, <laughs> um, so basically there is the whole concept of heart, body, and mind um, where uh, this was something laugh created where there are heart players who just kind of, you know, play off of just their, just their gut feelings on things. There's the mind players who like to study the situations like, oh, in this situation, this won't reach and this frame will have this time so that I can recover and do this and da da da. And the body players are like, I just want to find the coolest combo and mix you up with zero until you die. Like that's like their whole entire strategy. So there's this kind of concept of heart, body and mind of the types of players. Uh, I personally, and this is something that mostly I've been pushing myself um, uh, is, is this concept that games are also more geared towards certain kind of players that there are some games that are more mind based body based and heart based to different kind of degrees and stuff like that this is something I truly believe in again this is just me uh, not everybody believes in this so this is just my philosophy on the thing uh, a couple of things to say about this, first of all, is that one, I do believe Guilty Gear is has always been a perfect amalgamation of the heart, body, and mind 
uh, because there's so much knowledge you need in that game of situations. Uh, you get to make so many crazy on the fly, you know, improvised decisions thanks to Roman cancel and thanks to the openness of the game. And some characters are just crazy execution. The other thing I want to say as well is that every fighting game at the highest level becomes a heart game. Because once you get all the knowledge and the execution, it comes down to the crazy decisions and stuff like that. But uh, to get to that level, I think every game has a different kind of, uh, 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 I don't want to call it gatekeeping, but a different kind of uh, a road to travel uh, to get sure. to that point. So there you go. So what's so what's a good example of a heart game and what's a good example of a mind game? Uh, I think Samurai Showdown and Soul Calibur Six are great heart games, examples of heart games, and I think games like Tekken and Street Fighter V are mind games where you have to know more about the situation, about the specifics, like Tekken, this move can only be sidestepped left, you know, this move is leaves you plus this in this situation so you have you know whereas the soul caliber it's like this move is minus but it you know you use it at the range and nobody cares and like if it's a horizontal if it's a vertical move you just sidestep it like you just know like <laughs> kind of situation you know so those are uh i think some good examples of those kind of games so what about body games uh marvel because <laughs> uh, a lot of the execution to to play marvel in there like if you really want to play Marvel, you are not going to be the best Nova Spencer player if you don't have Flames of the Faltine loops. Like, if you're going to want to be good at that, you have to learn Flames of the Faltine loops. You're going to have to learn those crazy Doctor Doom foot dive combos and all that stuff like that. So zero lightning loops, right? I mean, whether you are a top level zero player is based off of that. And like people used to praise Flux for getting the true full five hits on both of the lightnings and stuff like that. So uh, I do think it's a, it's kind of a, a more of a body game uh, with a lot of heart in there as well. So I'm the just thinking about in... Tong right now. I'm Was thinking that... about Tong who has the worst execution in the world. <laughs> and he's a very competent Marvel 3 player. Well, that's because he uses big bodies, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, I, I don't know if I can say it's a, it's like a execution game. Oh, where yeah, yeah, yeah. Pong okay. beats people. Again, again, when I say these things, it's not like a total qualification that there is no way to play it if you're not. You know, clearly, sure. if you're not a mind player, you can get into Tekken. I think Anakin is one of those guys. Anakin is one of the best players in Tekken and he doesn't know frame data. Like he he has said he does not know frame data in that game. Put him on blast. That man doesn't know shit, but he's really good. <laughs> he doesn't know shit. That doesn't mean see that's the thing is I don't even consider that talking shit, right? Like I think that that's just the quality of how he plays. Uh, people sure. can correct me if I'm wrong on that. That's what I'd heard, that Anakin says he does not know anything about uh, frame data and stuff. JDCR as well, yeah. Uh, Street like, Fighter it's like 5. Hearing, uh, it's like hearing Leffen and Mango talk about Smash. Yeah. For Leffen, <laughs> Leffen knows like everything that there is to know about that video game. Right. <laughs> All of the weird little things in it. Every frame data thing. And Mango's just like, I don't know. I just, and he just... <laughs> Killing like, everybody anyway. I don't this, know. This what thing is three that? frames or whatever. Uh, Mango was like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's that's kind of how I view it. Now, like I said, my caveat is that I actually don't think Strive is a pure heart game. I think there's a lot of uh, a mixture of it. And that's how I've always thought of the Guilty Gear uh, game. I also think Street Fighter 4 is one of the best blends of the, of the three qualities because the characters are so different. If you want to be a body player, you can be Sakura. If you want to be a crazy ass heart player, you can be the the Gamble Seth and the Gamble Dudleys out there and everything. And if you are a science oh, player, great. you will play Dalsum and know exactly if they block a medium kick, they can't jump, and then this anti air will work, and et cetera, et cetera. So, Fortunately, you know, Dalsum just... doesn't have a player base in that video game. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, and, and again, I say that this is my thing because there are a lot of players who people who hate this classification, like like High Fight actually says in the chat. I know he hates it because every time I talk about it, he gets mad. <laughs> but for me, there's too much evidence of it, and there's too much. It, it it I think it helps people understand why they don't like a game. 
Like, I, I, it's frustrating for me to have people go, I hate Street Fighter because everyone plays the same. And it's not true at all. It's just that the game is not for you and you don't understand the game because the game is more of a mind game than a heart game. Almost everybody that I talk to who has said they hate Street Fighter V, I can almost instantly peg as a heart player because then I say, go play this instead. And they're like, yeah, this game's awesome. You know, like, th there's just too much of it out there. And to deny that, I think hurts us as a scene a little bit more. I think the qualifications are important so that when you go into a fighting game, you kind of know what to expect. I know now why Tekken is so hard for me to play. I know now why Street Fighter V is so hard for me to play, yet I play Soul Calibur, I play Guilty Gear, I play Samurai Showdown, and I can do great right away. You know, I can do, on well, Soul Calibur, it's a lot of work because I only play once a week, but everyone's always surprised at how much I can grow in playing once a week. I think that's important. I actually really think that's valuable as a player to learn because now when I go into Street Fighter V, I know what is holding me back and what I need to do to focus on to get better at it because I have to fight what I want to do. You know what I mean? So I think that's really important. That's how Yeah, I, I mean... I mean, to, to go back to the to the question, I don't think there are any good examples of that, but I, I, I feel that way because I don't think there's heart games versus mind games. I think there's heart players and mind players and body players. I think the type of players that may prefer a certain game might gravitate, might, might be more heart players or might be more mind type players. However, I don't think the games are inherently either of those things. Uh, I think every at at the very base level, every video game is wireframes and, and frame data, right? Like that they're they're all they're all going to be scientific. And like you said, once you get to the highest level, then that's when the heart really comes out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you know, even even I don't even say the highest level. Playing against someone of the same skill level, that's when the heart is going to come out. Uh, but I, I I think that's I think that's a player thing. I, I don't necessarily think. <laughs> any game is designed like i don't think the developers come in and say all right we want our players to no. play with their heart more than their mind no you know? no like, no I, nobody does that on purpose it just happens yeah it just <laughs> it just happens so I, I think that certain players are going to be attracted to certain types of games but i don't think it makes the game that type it, it, does that make sense like just because heart <laughs> players are playing this game doesn't mean it's a heart game it just means for whatever reason that group of players like that game i mean by definition, that's what it means. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, that's, I, I don't think so, because I, I think at, at the base of every game, it's wireframes and polygons and frame data. Like, that's that's what video games are. Yeah. So I, I think it's really hard to take that science out of it and then say, like, oh, but since this is how things interact, it becomes a hard game. Like, I don't think that's fair to the game to classify it like that. I mean, I think it's I think it's justified to classify that way because I've always said this, no amount of frame data is gonna help you in super turbo. It just really doesn't matter because if you're minus one, you're throwable. And nothing puts you that close to them when you're minus one anyway, except for bison scissor kick, right? Like or or you're just super punishable. Like there's no amount of frame data that's going to help you learn get better than than Kotaka Shoten, you know, at, at Super Turbo. Like, I think it's very justifiable to say that some fighting games don't need... Samurai Showdown doesn't need frame data. There's just like... <laughs> we don't really care about frame data in Samurai Showdown, right? Like, it's just... It, you play it because you just know what you want to do at that moment. And so, there's just very different levels of it, in my opinion. And so, if certain players are gravitated towards certain games, and it's consistent, I think it's fair to say that that game is that kind of game because it appeals to that kind of person sure i mean your your example of sam show though like i use frame data in sam show i couldn't figure out how to be yukio so i learned how to be yukio through the frame data mm -hmm. i needed to know how negative he was on slide i needed to know what his options were on way like, i needed to know that stuff so i, I still use frame data to, to figure out what that was like even as much as i agree with you that heart players play sam show like, that is mm -hmm. where they gravitated to. I think you still have to know that stuff at the highest level. Um, I think it's really, really important. I can't speak on, like, Smash. Like, that's a whole different genre, <laughs> basically, you know, in terms of how you play those games. But as far as, like, traditional 2D fighters go, I think you need a, 
a mix of both. Like mm-hmm. like you said, you're negative one, you're throwable in NST, right? But also, you need to know the spacing. Now, is, would you consider the spacing on something, like, to know when you can throw someone because they're negative one? Like, you need to know that spacing, right, to where they're going to be after they do an attack. Yeah. How do you know that? Like, I don't, I don't think that's heart. I think that's mind. No, because Whereas, you, you, I, you find out about that the first time you block it and you throw them. <laughs> or you come out with a normal. <laughs> like, it's not... Even punishing Ukiyo's, you know, like I said, you could use the frame data to skirt a lot of it. Like, oh, okay, he's minus this, so I can punish with this. Or you block it in training mode and you kill the guy, right? I mean, like, that works too, so... <laughs> yeah, I don't think that this classification has meaning and is basically an ex post facto justification for what you like and don't like in games. Um, so it's useful for you because it's it's describing what you enjoy, but is not good at getting at any deeper truth other than what you prefer. That's fine. But I also don't think that it means anything to say that a game is mind because you need to know some information, but not others, nor that heart is a game is heart or not because it takes some kind of decision making and not others. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that every game has some mix of all sorts of decision making and mm-hmm. knowledge that you need to know, and every player has to have all of those as well. And um, some people will subjectively enjoy some or the other of those, and not others. Um, but that doesn't really speak to whether the game is like in any significant way about making decisions with your heart in a way that other games are not. It's just what you prefer. Which is, again, totally fine. Yeah. But I think that it doesn't really describe a phenomenon that exists outside of you. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I've had this conversation with a lot of people, and it's really opened up their eyes in a lot of the way they look at fighting games, too. And like I said, I, even people who I know who hate, fight, who hate a certain fighting game, when I talk to them about this and I kind of describe that, they're like, oh... That makes a lot of sense, and they actually hate that game less now because they understand kind of how it appeals to them and doesn't appeal to them. So I, I think that there's a usefulness to it. You know, I think that there's a usefulness because there's so many fighting games out there, and one of the messages is play what you enjoy. And one of the best ways to figure out what you enjoy is knowing what kind of player you are and what kind of game actually facilitates mm-hmm. that kind of play a little bit more. It makes you detest other fighting games less it makes it easier for you to appreciate the games that do and understand why those games appeal to you so you know it sounds like a it does sound like a a post justification kind of thing but the reason why i'm so strong on it is because it's really opened my eyes in a lot of ways of how i look at fighting games and how i teach fighting games and It's actually, I feel like, helped me connect with a lot of different people in different ways because now when I figure out what kind of player you are, I know how to teach you better, I know what to recommend better, etc., etc. And I I just really feel like it's helped me connect a lot more to different games. So it's more than just a justify why I like certain games. It's more of a, I want to figure out why the entire community feel certain ways about certain games and how to help people really, really embrace fighting games for how they are. So, yeah. All right. Well, you got anything else to say on this topic? Nope. (laughs) All right, cool. So let's get to a little bit of news other than the stuff that we have discussed because we kind of talked about most of it. (laughs) But uh, the, the one other bit of news that's related to games is that there's gonna be a new Street Fighter V patch. That's right. Even though the last patch was only a week ago, there's gonna be a new one. Um, This is not a surprise. We talked, in fact, last time about some of the bugs that had appeared in the latest patch. One that makes it so that the game is in mono rather than stereo, which has really (laughs) bothered a lot of players, uh, understandably, of course. But a bunch of other stuff, too. A bunch of, like, weird little bugs. Mm-hmm. You can make some characters T-pose, for example. Like, it's just, like, weird stuff in there. Yeah. Um, and I, I've also heard people saying that they experience more, like, their buttons getting sucked out in a way that they didn't really before, even when they're playing in training mode. Um, I haven't really been able to play, so I can't mm-hmm. verify that myself. But 
I've seen a lot of people say it at this point. Yeah. So this is going to happen tomorrow. There's going to be server maintenance as they change whatever they're going to change, and hopefully everything will be fixed. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the good news to come out of that is Capcom communicated that right away, which yes. is awesome. <laughs> and I, I mean, I tweeted about it, uh, but I just... I love what Capcom's doing, man. They're 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 recovering. They're 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 gaining trust back, um, even though they probably won't ever fully fix the Street Fighter V netcode. Whatever. Hopefully, they do better with the next game. Um, but other than that, man, their their, their communication and the patch notes and, and and the roadmaps they've been giving us and the updates. Fan, keep doing it, Capcom. We love it. Thank you. We've been waiting for this for a long time. One hundred percent. Whoever's in charge of Capcom now is doing a great job. <laughs> ever, ever since something like like summer of 2020, I feel like there's been a like significant change in how they've been dealing with the community and making game related decisions. Yeah, yeah. I don't well, know they, what might have happened in that. They time, changed but... leadership, and I was like, oh no, but it seems to be working out. <laughs> yeah, it was a big risk that they took. Yeah, R everything seems like it's worked out <laughs> shocking so far. To say the least shocking to say say the least. So. Who would have known for 15 years? <laughs> Who would have dunk it? Uh. Uh, anyway, we move on. Uh, that's that's the only game-related info that I have, other than what we've already talked about. Uh, let's talk about a couple things that are happening this coming weekend. There's going to be the Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour. -na -na. That's the sound effect that goes with it. Cool. So the Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour, uh, there's going to be just, it's basically like a day of all sorts of Dragon Ball related stuff. They have different streams going on. There's going to be a lot of things um, relating to not just Dragon Ball Fighters, but also a couple of the other games. The Dragon Ball something card game. I can't read it. It's very far away from me, but whatever. And something <laughs> else that I also, looks like Dragon Ball Legends, maybe? Nobody's ever heard of that game. I don't know. Uh, whatever. So this this is it actually looks really cool. So they're going to be talking about for the it's some something whatever. It looks really cool. Because <laughs> well, they are doing things for DBFZ that I think are awesome. There's going to be a showcase for Gogeta, which is very cool. They're going to have a, just like live look at it, and they're also going to have uh, team tournaments that are kind of done in this interesting way, where they're they had uh, the players who were in the DBFZ national championships are playing on team battles with character draft. Character-based draft. I saw that, yeah. And yeah, it's an interesting take on this. So basically each team captain gets to pick 10 characters for their team roster <laughs> that their players will then pick from among to make their teams when they play. And so, you know, you end up with interesting team uh, assortments where you know you make your first pick, then you make your second, third, and fourth, etc. You know you kind of go in a normal round, and you end up with these teams who you have to stick with one of, one of those or three, I guess, of those characters that you end up with. Do you know? Do you uh, so, know if they're limiting it? So after they draft it, like let's say team one drafts ten characters, do all the players on that team have to use different characters, or do they just can they repeat in the pool? Not I didn't sure. see that addressed, but that is okay. a good question. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see anybody talking about that, but uh, but interesting. In any case, I think that's a pretty cool idea, and that's going to be taking place along with again the Gogeta showcase on March the sixth, which is this weekend at 10 a.m. Pacific time slash 7 p.m. Central Europe time, and. Yeah, you know, again, if you care about the other games too, there's going to be a lot of things that they're going to do also. I just don't know anything about them, but there is a lot of info to be had on the internet. But for DBFZ, yeah, a lot of cool stuff going on. Nope. In addition, this coming weekend, there's going to be We Play's Ultimate Weekend Brawl. So they're starting a new weekly series of events for Mortal Kombat 11, at least for now, that will be basically show matches. So there are going to be two first to threes where each winner will get 300 bucks. And then there's going to be a first to four as the headliner, and that will be for 500 bucks. Cool. And I don't know which players they're going to have yet. I don't. I haven't seen that announced for this coming weekend, but it will start this weekend on Saturday. So check that out for people who are interested in Mortal Kombat 11 and 
Again, it's pretty cool that WePlay has been doing stuff like this. They've also announced their Ultimate Fighting League that's going to start in, I think, a few weeks. That will have this as well as, I think, Tekken and Soul Calibur, if I recall yeah. correctly. Yeah, hashtag higher jades. <laughs> there you go. That's all I got for news. That's it. All right, moving on. Moving on. Kitty Cat doesn't want that to happen, though. Oh, good boy. Well, excuse me? Oh, wait, no, that is. The, damn it. Oh, that was Jasmine boy. for some reason. Oh, oh, boy. I don't know why, but I was thinking the whole time that was Jasmine. No. <laughs> this past weekend, there was an event that's run by the folks who run First Attack and the team that sponsors players in Puerto Rico, Red Rooster. That was a Street Fighter V event featuring players from all over the Caribbean, Central America, and I think the Gulf Coast of the U.S., if I recall correctly. So kind of a, a reasonably wide geographic area. The South, maybe it was in general. I think they, it says that they also included North Carolina. So they, they, had, they had quite a wide swath, but um, there's a lot of, of very strong players in that region, of course, people who have made it to and won Capcom Cup and many other big tournaments in the past. So they got to the top four. The top four will be played out, I think, tomorrow. Okay. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's at the end of March. I'm the end of March. Tomorrow, end of March, same thing, man. The end of March, and it's going to be held in person. So those four players will be getting together in person. I mean, good, if it's a small number of people, it's like feasible to do safely. <laughs> good luck for them. It's it's feasible in a small number of people, I think is the theory. I mean, I just did an event where there were a few people who flew into it. So what can I say? Yeah. But yeah, uh, you know, you, you got to take it seriously. And I know the people involved there. So I assume that they mm -hmm. will because they're good folks. Um, the people who made top four are AAA Kusanagi with Sakura versus, this is the winner's side, versus Bandit's Mena RD, mm. also with Sakura. <laughs> and loser's bracket is Bandit's Kaba with Guile and Red Rooster Mono with Fang. So that's a pretty good top four. Okay. I was kind of hoping for another Sakura. <laughs> yeah, it's random, right? Yeah. I don't know I mean, how that maybe not up. anymore, right? <laughs> maybe not. Yeah, I mean, dude, she, she won Evo Japan. Everybody who said she was bad could shut up right then and there. Right. Oh, 100%. She's not bad. Yeah. Absolutely right. Uh, so that's cool. Look forward to the finals of that happening again towards the end of March. Yeah. I also just added the, the Matarino G Fuel Tropical Rain event that just took place this last week as well. Uh, a lot of East Coast players. It was basically an East Coast regional a lot of strong players in there, including Zaffarino, including Punk, including a whole bunch of really good people. Uh, was uh, I think it got up to around like twenty five hundred dollars in prizes for everybody through Matcherino again. And uh, first place, well, look at this. Fourth place was Shock D Zamus. Uh, Shock D, I guess Shock Z Damus. Oh, I typed it wrong in the, on my thing, but he was an Alex player. Mm. So Alex getting top four, Zaffarino Ooh. in third place with Sagat, second place, hey look, I'm your space boy <laughs> with Sakura, <laughs> and uh, first place, your boy, Mr. David, no need to talk with E Honda. <laughs> oh, let's go the big H, <laughs> my man. Yeah, E Honda, and keep in mind, this is a tournament that had Destructive, that had NYC Furby, Punk to God was in there, Tega was in there, uh, Orange Man was there, Shine was playing in this tournament, so there's well, a, was a, there. a lot of people in there. Rob TV was playing in there, a lot of good like players there, so uh, definitely some interesting results there, but uh, uh, yeah, was won by Honda. Look, many people are saying that Honda's top tier. Some people are saying, many people are saying that Honda's top tier. He got bumped. I've heard, I've heard that he's been, some people have been, everybody's saying that Honda's top tier. Honda, Honda's real fun. Yeah. Honda's real fun now. I mean, he was fun before, but more of like a, I'm a jerk type of way. Now it's like, I get one headbutt and here comes the mix. He didn't need it. He didn't need he did, it. He did not need it. <laughs> I, I mean, absolutely agree. I, I, I was hoping he would be able to get a free V-Skill after landing a heavy headbutt. But I get to pick if I want to charge up my V-Skill and do hands to you or just get in your face and do whatever I want. All he had to do was fight Honda's Lucia. Good. All he had to do was good. fight Lucia because then a headbutt would equal a free V-Skill 100% of the time. <laughs> It was it was true in a lot of matchups, not just for this year. 
<laughs> but yeah, I will say that I'm not ready to make pronouncements on tier lists yet. Oh I, yeah, again, it's way too early. Able to play. It's way too early. Well, if I had been playing all week, like I think I would have if I hadn't been super busy with work. I probably would feel that way, but I mean, it would be too early, but like I would be ready to be like, here's my early thoughts, but I don't have early thoughts yet on account yeah. of that. However, I am pretty open to the idea of Honda being top tier. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll Honda, be honest with you. He, there's, he was good before. He was. Now he's like borderline brain dead. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> still. You get free, one hit, you get free offense. It's, it's I, fantastic. I, I think the, the only issue is that Sagat got better, so that might be harder. Ryu. And Sakura got better. Ryu. That might be harder. Yeah, Ryu as well. Guile's probably still good. Ryu so... didn't just get better. <laughs> Ryu, like, he showed up. <laughs> yeah. He's in the game now. <laughs> yeah. Also, I'm reading some real dingusry out there about how Dan is not great. And that let me, that is some and true dingusry, y'all. And the new Honda. That Dan guy isn't great. He's going to get buffed in the final batch. Dude, you know what Number that is one. actually? Is it's SF4 Dan. <laughs> of people being like, this character is garbage, but he was never garbage. This character However, is so much better than Street Fighter 4 Dan. I was just going to say, so. this character is getting so slept on better. and also is way better. And so I don't much. even know, how could you sleep on the character Punk 1 NLBC two days after picking up Dan for the See, first time? Without like, using the... Without using Super the strong. infinite. Amazing player. But two days into this thing and everybody was uh, playing their mains against him. Uh, you know, Got come on. smoked. Without even using the Danfinite, he was able to take it. He just landed it for the first time yesterday, I think. And then he, he told all of Justin's viewers to come back to him. He said Justin was stealing his viewers doing the Dan Infinite. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I got it now. You guys can come back. <laughs> yeah, it's not even important. Because it's going to go away for sure. They're going to mm -hmm, fix it in some mm -hmm. way. So I, I haven't I bothered. I kind of hope they don't. They, Of course they're going to fix it. I, you know? I know that they will, but I kind of hope they don't. So it's not actually important long term. It's And he won NLBC without doing it. And Anyway, obviously he's a good character. It's like very clear that he's a good character. Yeah. yeah Is he top sure. tier? I don't know about that. but He's, he's strong regardless. He's obviously strong. It's like super clear. You look, look at him for five minutes. I feel like it's obvious. Anyway, all right, that's it for tournament results, which we've gone on against anyway. Yeah. There's very little else. We had one mailbag question. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Actually, it ends up at perfect time. Drem, at Poogly Woogly, asks, what are your favorite or most memorable alternate colors and costumes in fighting games? You can include DLC. Yes, somebody interested in talking about the dolls? What outfits do you like the most for your dolls, Tubbleware? What do you got? What do you got? Give me number one cutest outfit you've ever dressed up your dolly in. Uh, the funniest one is Cable. Deadpool dresses Cable, cosplaying Cable in Marvel 3. Because he has a special entrance where he says, what, you thought Cable wasn't in this game? So that's probably my favorite. Plus, you know, I play Deadpool. I can't uh, recall ever having seen that. What does that look like? I, I He literally has, like, glued-on cable hair and, uh, like, a weapons belt and things like that. He looks like he looks like a full-on Deadpool with cable stuff glued onto him, basically. <laughs> really funny. I actually can't remember this at all, but that's... I don't remember what it at all. I actually just Googled that's, that's it to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, look at this. So that's kind of yeah, wild. And he yeah, says, that's, and that's you, thought my favorite. you thought cable yeah. wasn't in this game? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's probably my favorite. Uh, those costumes. I can tell you the one I hated the most by far. Okay. Uh, that is the Mega Man X skin in Marvel 3 for Zero. Because Hilarious. that got leaked. That got leaked like three or four months before characters oh, no. even started getting announced for um, for Ultimate. <laughs> like, Ultimate was a rumor at this time, and then right. that screenshot got leaked. And I immediately was like, yes, Mega Man X is in this game. He's going to be so sick. And then it was a fucking costume for a character I hated. <laughs> so that was cool. Great. Thanks, Capcom. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I will never get over that. You didn't play X in Marvel Infinite anyway. I, I tried to, but he was real stale and boring and awful. He sure was. So why would I? The game even said it. Ass. 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 Yeah, you already picked that character. <laughs> <laughs> ass. All right, what did James? What do you got? Are you I looking don't something know. up? Like I'm literally trying to like look through all these things to try to figure out what an answer would be. 
I'm not actually sure. I'd have to think about this a little bit more. Try to figure out because I mean, there's just so many to to go through. It's hard for me to say. Clearly, well, James loved the cat costume for Cammy in Street Fighter Four. Did she have one? <laughs> she absolutely had it. How, you own cats and you play Cammy. How do you not know this? Because <laughs> I don't. Everybody, think... they, they, everybody got like a furry outfit in Ultra. Oh, that's like, right. Literally everyone oh, got an that's animal right. Yeah, yeah, I barely remember that. I I don't think I paid Mark attention. Cammy was a cat. She was a really cute cat. It was probably tail really cute. not very good or something like that, which is why I probably don't remember it. Um. Uh, God, I can't remember now. I have to think about that. I have to think about what, what my favorite costume or color is. Because I know, because the reason why it's hard for me to answer this, because I know there's an answer. I know I have like something in my mind right now that's like, you know, poking at the back of my brain, like, you loved this costume and I can't remember what it was. Ugh. Well, while you're thinking about it, my answers are two. Well, I really want to say a lot more than that, but I guess I would say Injustice 2 Bane, I thought is like one of the sickest looking characters that I've ever played, especially with some of the alts that he had, some of the cool things that you can make him look. You could change so much about that game as we were talking about before that you could you could really customize like even more than in MK11 what your character ended up looking like. And I thought I made just such a sick looking Bane with a cool <laughs> red color and I was just so into it, you guys. I was so into it. But I mean, that that's that's not a predefined set, right? Like, I feel like this is something no. that's predefined. Scarecrow yeah, looked like so like, cool oh. in that game. Okay, fine. Predefined. At the end, the answer is Turtle Honda in Street Fighter V because Ooh, you can see it's so ugly. because you can see his face underneath the mask. <laughs> it's even, so even more, even more than Mecha Zangief. Yeah. For sure. Okay. okay. I, I thought Turtle. I thought Turtle Honda in Street Fighter Four was dope, but he wasn't a Kappa. He was just like straight up a turtle. I think. I think he was supposed to be a Kappa. I assume. Maybe. Well, he didn't have like the weird bald head or anything like that. That game. So he, he just looked like a Ninja Turtle to me. I didn't play him in that game on account of he was boring. But in this game, he is super cool and. You get to look like a complete dingus. He looks so stupid with that outfit on. He's got these weird cross eyes, and you can see his human face underneath the outfit. And if you take off this mask, it looks even stupider somehow. It's so great. I love it. I, it's a blast. Jesus. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I actually don't have an answer to this question. I'll, you know what? I'll try to think about it, and if I come up with something, I will... I will make up for it next week. Well, my real answers are definitely in Injustice 2 and MK11, but if you guys aren't going to allow me to pick one of those, like, kind of create your own looking right, dude, yeah, then yeah. That, that I would say... Oh, that would be like saying Soul Calibur create a character is my favorite. Right. It's not that extreme, but... Yeah, okay. Then I'll go with Honda, the Kappa. All right. That's hmm. it. Cool, we did it. That's a show in the books. It sure is. I got this cool hoodie. You guys can't get one. Because <laughs> I got the last medium in this pink hoodie that they had. I had the very last one. So, Good job. You did Thanks, it. buddy. You guys can't have one. I, I, I don't want a medium hoodie. Okay. Well, ask there are ask me there, if man. I could get one even if I did, David. <laughs> There's going to be... I think there are still some larges up to triple X that are remaining, so people are interested in that. I think there are still some, but mm. I just wanted to say I think it looks real cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, I'm looking through all these characters. I'm trying to figure out, like, there's got to be some costume that just jumps out to me that I loved and I can't it's think. It's still looking. Dude, it's bothering me so much because I know there's something. So, <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, well, that's that. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks a lot for hanging out, everybody. I hope you all have a good night. Give us a follow or a subscription or a whatever. And thanks to everybody who has. Yeah, Take, seriously. A bunch of people put in subs today and high five to everybody who did. And Curly I, gifted a sub. Thanks you very much. Also, guys, if you see anything you like or anything like that, don't be afraid to clip it. It makes us creating content a lot easier mm. later on if we can just take your clips and use them. <laughs> <laughs> Being honest. So, you know, 
If you guys want to clip stuff, just do it. There you go. All We'd right. appreciate it. Inspirational oh. words from Tubbleware. All right, let's bird him. I'm birding him again. Bird him. This is the second. Oh, you already did? Oh, I can't hear Oh, that's yeah, right. Now you can hear them. it because I had clicked it. I had been birding them, but you guys couldn't hear it, but you Got can it. hear it now. That makes sense. We can. Thanks, OG Geek. Thanks, Spinning Bird Kicks. Later, guys.